Truth Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. Ladies and gentlemen, what's up? I'm your host, Truth Seeker. This is the Truth Seeker Podcast, and uh, excited and delighted to be with you guys today. We've got an awesome show planned for you. Good discussion we're going to get into, discussing all things spiritual and esoteric and metaphysical and everything that you just heard in that intro. We're going to try to discuss every, every bit of that stuff. It's going to be good. i uh, got a great guest uh, lined up for today. I uh, can't go any further without saying thank you to everybody who is supporting my work via Patreon. You guys are the enables, uh, enablers. Uh, this show does not exist without you. So thank you for allowing me to create this art and bring it out there and uh, and share it with the world. You guys are awesome. Special shout out to some of the newest patrons within the last week or two. Uh, shout out to, personally, Dustin Kumar. Thank you, Dustin. David Huffman. Crawlings. Crawl Earnings. Tell me how to pronounce that that word. Angel. Um, Rajalio. Rigaldo, Susie, Lapner, Shawnee, Benz. Thank you guys for coming on and supporting the work. Special shout out to Noah. Special shout out to Adam Brink. And special shout out to Benny and his family for uh, donating at the diamond body level. You guys mean the world to me. Thank you really from the bottom of my heart. You are the enablers. Thank you. Um, if you would like to give, if you would like to support the show, head on over to patreon.com backslash truth seeker. There you get access to my entire discography of work, 10 plus albums. You get access to the Thursday night school of the mystics, which we do every Thursday It's the teaching. It's the community. It's the hands-on part of this podcast. If you resonate with this show, the guest, what we bring to the table, make sure you join us on Thursday nights at the School of the Mystics. You get access to that for as little as a dollar a month and uh, all that cool stuff. Also get access to our private Facebook group and our um, Discord chat, which Discord's always popping. That's we. This is our daily thing. We do this every day. It's not just Tuesday and Thursday when we go live. Throughout the week, we're building, we're lifting up each other in prayer and, and encouragement and things like that. So make sure you, you join us, man. It's a whole community, a lot of like-minded people. So patreon.com backslash truthseeker. And um, I'm going to go ahead and bring on today's guest. This is uh, Taint Zinzer. Is that how you pronounce it? Sure is, buddy. Brother, I want to say thank you for supporting my work as well, man. You've been a Patreon a patron for several months as well believing in my work, uh, helping support it financially. Brother, thank you publicly for supporting my work as well. You're welcome, Derek. You're awesome, man. Keep up the good <laughs> work, man. Straight up, man. Thanks, man. We're going to get it in today, man. Um, there's a lot of stuff to talk about, uh, a lot of stuff we have in common. Um, part of the your story is where you started off at, which is a great place to start, talking about coming out of the Christian church, being a minister, being a servant, someone who 
is, you know, agreeing with that whole doctrine and ideology and I'd like to talk about that mindset that that it gives you, you know, and then what, what you have to kind of break free from in the end and those things and hear about your journey because there's a lot of people there. There's a lot of people listening who are still in church, a lot of people wanting to come out or to feel like God, the creator's calling them out of church, but not away from their relationship with Christ. You know what I'm saying? That's a weird thing to uh, rationalize or to kind of make sense of. It's like, you know, because the, the, the church realm will try to tell you that because you don't go to church, you're not a part of the church, which that's a lie. Right. And so what that does to you psychologically, man, when people push you out and stuff and then come in, you know, on your own and, and finding out who you are, what you are bringing that to the table, man, that's your story. That's my story. And a lot of people listening, bro, I want to tackle that today. So welcome to the show again. And uh, if you want to go ahead and give people a little bit of background about uh, who you are, and what you bring to the table, man, let's start there. Okay, man. Thanks, man. And it's 11, 11, 11, 11 on September the 11th <laughs> guys <laughs> straight up. Um, anyhow, um, pretty much um, spent most of my life um, like a lot of us did in the uh, 70s and 80s, kind of living it up, uh, living it out, high school dropout at 15, um, lived a hell of a life uh, up until the point uh, when I was pretty much saved by God from my own misery uh, at the age of 21. Um, and soon after that, I spent about the next uh, 16 years in the church, um, very devoted, um, Back in the late '90s, I mean, it it was pretty it was pretty off, awesome. It was the what would Jesus do movement and <laughs> Jesus fish and all that stuff. You know, everything was labeled and um, it was actually very trendy. Um, so I got hooked up in that. And as a musician, I was pretty much um, wrapped up in most praise and worship teams. I was at uh, Big Buddies program, uh, Gospel for Asia, Compassion International, raising support for kids. Um, Kind of really spent a lot of time in church in the late 90s, meaning uh, Sunday morning, Sunday nights, uh, Wednesday nights, Friday night, uh, singles groups. Um, it was pretty pretty much all I did um, while all the rest of my friends were still living their life, going to jail, <laughs> um, drinking and doing a lot of things that I kind of removed myself from. So it was different, but I was the one who was actually bringing them to church and sometimes it was a pretty awesome experience to take some people that you wouldn't imagine going. And I had just enough pull to get them there. Um, so God used me in those points. And, um, did you keep any of them there? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, I personally didn't, you know that, yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I got them in the door. Um, so, uh, yeah, it was a time where, you know, even, I used to go before I met my wife and stuff like that. I used to go to the rescue missions and I'd actually pull up in front of the rescue mission Sunday mornings in my uh, 88 IROC and I just fill my car up, whatever, whoever can get in um, and take them to church. Um, after church, I was that guy taking the homeless person that walked in uh, for lunch. Pretty much, um, even though I was slightly righteous because of the program I tapped into and the people I was hanging out with, um, I always had the heart. And when people needed help, when they needed people that either um, had deeper issues and stuff like that, I was usually the one that they called to kind of come in because, I don't know, they consider me the messy person more or less. Not messy as in a living, but messy as in background. Yeah. Uh, that I was able to deal with um, and relate a lot more to people that were really in dire straits. Um, so with, with all those years put in, um, it, it was, you know, I was plugged in for good and it felt, it felt good, but it's strange because the few years prior to, um, more or less, uh, being removed from religion permanently, which was around 2012, 11, um, I just felt dry, man. I was doing everything I could. I mean, missions trips, um, like I said, I, I would do uh, at um, Promise Keepers. I would do yeah. <laughs> uh, child sponsorship with Compassion or the Fire the Fire. <laughs> Any of that yeah. stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, you know, I was I was the guy behind the booth, um, raising, getting children sponsored. Um, even the one day at my small church of like 115 people. Uh, the one Sunday we had eight kids sponsored, and when Gospel for Asia got back to me, they were like, "This is like." 
such a small body. Wow. Uh, I kind of flaked out. I like I was talking to Derek prior to being on here, get a little nervous. Um, always been a performer. Um, so it's kind of funny that I put myself in that situation of uh, being a little uncomfortable in front of crowds, but uh, kind of just dropped um, some James on the people at church and um, some other scriptures that were really hard, um, hard for me to actually look people in the face and say it. And I, I kind of I was shaking. I swore I was going to pass out at the moment. But at the end of the day, there was eight kids sponsored and uh, all glory to God. I mean, I was just so excited about it. So it's sometimes we get in those situations where it's not easy uh, to kind of put the fire in people's hearts. But I've always been that person. And uh, I appreciate God using me like that. Yeah. It's never it's never easy. But in the end, I, I feel stretched. I feel better um, because of it. So. Uh, that kind of takes you up to my experience within the body at the time. But I mean, I was fully active. Like I said, I mean, um, big buddy programs, praise and worship missions. And like I said, I, I mean, weekly, I would go to two or three or four different churches in my town um, just to be a part of the body, whether we were handing out free, free Christmas trees or um, walk around neighborhoods, praying with people and stuff like that. So yeah. I was well rooted yeah. back in the day. It's like a good foundation. Um, yeah, it was. So, and I would say this, man. It's like uh, I struggle with Christians <laughs> now. <laughs> me too. <laughs> uh, because, well, <laughs> well I, I do and I don't, meaning that um, I love everyone. So I yeah. can't say I can't put anybody below me with that. Um, it just I know where I came from. I know what I learned and I came through it. And it's one of those things that I've accepted. And it's not something I expect everybody else to accept. And when yeah. I sat in church, there, there, I mean, 90 to even higher percentage are pusiters, you know, fear, yeah. fear death, <laughs> fear God. Um, they're not going to do much more than show up every Sunday. And that was the thing that kind of really always drove me nuts, nuts in the body. Um, not, not many people working. Everybody's just kind of showing up just so they can be part of the club. What was your um, initial like salvation experience? Did you? Like, how, <laughs> nice. like, how, how, You're gonna go there already, aren't you? Are yeah. you talking like how I got saved? Yeah. How, how you? Yeah. How you had? Well, you got faith in Christ. Put, like, I, I love this story, and I'm sorry for my kids while they're watching this video. Um, <laughs> uh, mine was unique because uh, did a lot of hardcore drugs. Um, never breached heroin. That so uh, yeah. a lot of drugs back in the day, uh, but didn't go that far. Um, not that what I did was good. Uh, I actually was on LSD one night when I was 21 years old. Um, and I had a Paul experience, um, where I was in my apartment by myself and no windows were open or doors were open or anything like that. And wind came through my house. Like I'll never forget. Um, it was on a back end of an abortion, uh, with a girlfriend. And I kind of hit a spot where, I did so many things wrong in my life. Um, I, I hit that point where it was the first time in my life I didn't feel like I had the right to make that decision. I made a lot of mistakes, but I didn't feel like I had the right to give or, well, to take away life. Uh, and it just shocked my whole being. Um, I was one of those people, even before I found God, that um, kind of living a life. Um, but when I drove home from these parties and these events late at night, three o'clock in the morning, I'd be like slumped over my steering wheel crying. You know, I couldn't figure it out. Um, always looking for something, but you know, I grew up, I mean, I can call myself a Satanist, but I mean, we, we do all kinds of crazy stuff. King Diamond was my favorite band <laughs> uh, back in the day. Uh, a lot of wicked stuff I would entertain and I did not uh, respect God whatsoever, not whatsoever. Um, so when I got hit with that, with that unveiling that night, it was almost like, just like the Paul. And, you know, I don't really follow the Pauline teachings anymore. Um, but it was like the scales were ripped off. Like the reality was so real. I was just so taken back. Um, I couldn't get the church quick enough or to God quick enough. I was just like, somebody tell me, somebody help me because it's, I, I I've been touched and I don't know what to do with it. Yeah. But for some reason now, uh, the reality is real. And, um, I was moved mightily. So you, you felt that mighty rushing wind come through. Did you feel the euphoria, like the Holy Spirit, like you would feel in church and stuff like that? Yeah, I did. 
I did, but I didn't know what it was. Yeah. First time occurrence, you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so I was kind of overwhelmed, but I knew that something was way bigger than me and I was willing to find out what it was. And after kicking it for, um, kicking it, literally kicking it for 20 years and uh, denouncing it and being away from it, God said, that's enough, my son. <laughs> and it, it was a humbling experience, but it, it was my wake up call. And, you know, the people that were out around me, <laughs> ex-girlfriend, I even went back to at the time and she was like, no, nope, don't want to hear anything about it. Yeah. And I'm just like, yeah. well, then I'm going this way because whatever yeah. it is, you're calling me. Um, so it, it was huge healing. And, you know, back in the day, um, I was taught through other Christians that were closest to me and stuff like that. You know, you're born again and all that stuff, you know, wasn't of you and uh, your new creation in Christ. Um, you're not responsible for that. Um, and, you know, for many years in the church, I, I did kind of, that's not, it wasn't me. Um, I didn't take credit for it. <laughs> yeah. um, the best part that happened once I became enlightened and moved into the spiritual movement. Um, I, I don't really like using that word too much, but just <laughs> um, was the fact that I started going back and being responsible for everything I didn't think of. Um, the bullying, the, the just outright ignorance, the way I treated people. Um, I had to be accountable for, for And what I realized later in life was the karma that I suffered, suffered through. As a Christian or as an unbeliever? As a Christian. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> That's a whole nother revelation in itself, right? Suffered, man. Suffer, suffer, suffer. Um, I got in a fight the one time uh, when I first got married, um, some guy hit our car and I pulled, I, I don't fight anymore. Like the last time I fought, I was like 18, 19. So I'm not running around fighting people. But anyway, some guy hit our car and I jumped out of the car because uh, he was trying to flee the scene and he couldn't get out. And so he came up to me, knocked me out cold, unconscious. I woke up. They won't even call an ambulance because there's a thing in our town called Music Fest. So they just thought it was a drunk brawl. Well, I was playing pinochle with my mom that night. I didn't even drink. <laughs> so more or less, what I'm trying to say is I stood up, got in my wife's car, sat there, and I re reflected on the time that I, I beat someone up in gym class with a baseball bat. <laughs> and I was like, fair enough. Let's get to the hospital. <laughs> so I'm, I'm just saying there's just key points in my life that, you know, the car, I, I had to walk through it. You can't escape it. Um, you'd be a fool to actually run away from it. it it's all fair. And actually, it makes you who you are, and I'm glad for it. And that's what I mean. About four or five years ago, I felt like that cycle finally leveled out, stopped, and I'm outside that realm. Yeah. Well, I don't deal, deal with the karmatic part of life anymore. Let's, um, if we're looking at, if there's, uh, if there's somebody watching who's a Christian, they're in church, and you would think that um, Christianity is like the pinnacle of devotion, of doing good works, of creating good karma, you know, putting out good, good stuff out there, you know, um, and even what we call the, um, the sanctification process of this inward cleaning out, making amends with the past and stuff and deliverance ministry and all this stuff that's kind of wrapped in with Christianity, um, in spirituality, you went deeper than what you was introduced to like, Hey, Jesus got your past. It's all good. Give it to him. Like when you got into more of the spirituality, you went deeper as far as making amends with the past and speaking healing oh, to that yeah, inner child 100%. and stuff like that. It wasn't even close. Yep. And let me make one point about um, the being saved, finding God on microdots, LSD. What I realized back in the day was God meets us exactly where we're at. It took a long time to realize that. And a lot of people don't think God will go to the trenches or God will go to the slums. God is... The trenches god is the slums he delivers period <laughs> um so with that being said it's like you know um the scariest point after that was kind of what you're just mentioning was actually leaving the the church and i had enough experiences with the holy spirit and god in my life that i didn't want to lose that and i was scared that yeah. you know by seeking like I, like jesus asked us to um I was curious, I guess you'd say that, you know, how's this going to work for me now? Because I'm kind of outside the bounds. Uh, but yet I see it all over the place that we were meant to actually not as much be taught as we were to seek ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, because when you're taught, you learn man's ways, no matter if it's good pastor or not. I mean, I watched Charles Stanley through and through and through and through. 
Uh, I watched him a couple months ago and I was totally um, disgusted <laughs> by the message um, that I used to enjoy because one of the messages was someone that wasn't a Christian or didn't receive Jesus as their savior. Um, if they were talking to a God, it's not God. Yeah. And I was just, I was like, <laughs> yeah, I know, I right? Know. I was just like, okay, yeah. you know, because think about it, how many different faiths and religions all over the world? And so, anyway, it was just one of those things that I had to come out from and uh, all the better for it. But it hasn't been easy. I'm just glad I'm to the point where I am right now. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'm very, sens I'm very alive. sensitive person. So, uh, it, it wasn't exactly easy, but I, I had to keep kind of, um, you go through a dark night. You, I'm sure you went through a dark night. I mean, I, I definitely did. Like, oh, God. like you're talking about doing drugs and being a wicked, evil person, and all the demons and all the negativity that surrounded with that. I was into like really dark witchcraft and making packs with spirits and stuff as well. Mm -hmm. I got possessed. Was in a really crazy place, losing my mind. All of that stuff. When I was coming out of Christianity, as far as like in that transition of being someone who's known and people love, I mean, you too, you're in worship bands, you're doing evangelistic work and all of this kind of stuff. And now you're falling away if you let them tell it, you know? So, yeah, sure. um, being, being somebody who, you know, everybody liked and loved to versus on the other side. Now you're getting into, you're asking too many questions. You're getting into Gnosticism. You're asking, you think, Everybody goes to heaven. Any, if you say anything that goes against what they believe, you you get a target on your back. I went through like the dark night coming out of that was almost darker than going through the demonic possessions and stuff that I went through as a teenager of just, you know, everybody forsaking you, all your friends, you know, your people look up to you. Now they're calling you a devil worshiper, you know, all this kind of crazy stuff. Oh, you had to put up, up put up with that too, right? Heretic, wolf, whatever. Heretic, yeah, yeah all yeah, that. Yeah. Man. <laughs> They're singing the song still today. I say, <laughs> you know, I hear, I still hear them screaming, "Crucify them!" <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so yeah, it's it's one of those moments where um, you gotta choose God or the people, man. I chose God. Yeah, because so so you would say that God called you out. Sure did, man. God. You followed God. You didn't just mess up and get into wickedness or get into no. occult material and you got lost in it. You say that the Holy Spirit, God, Christ, led you down the path that you're on, right? That book. Right there. <laughs> mm -hmm. Changed my life forever. It's amazing, too. Uh, yeah. what, what I held up was the shack. There um, we go. <laughs> when you take God and make him a black woman, it changes everything. Uh, in its simplicity, I, I sat there uh, nights reading that book, just crying. That That's it right there. That's what moved me towards Gnosticism and everything else, because I had so many chains and restrictions on God. Um, picturing the, 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 the man in the seat, the white Anglo, <laughs> uh, the white man in the chair, you know, sitting in the seat, um, holding his hand over the people and stuff like that. And when I read a book that kind of turned everything upside down, um, it didn't matter what was really written in the book. Uh, it was my heart that received it. And I just sat there and literally cried for days because I just couldn't believe that I put such limitations on God and had an ideal that man created within my mind um, that I followed. And yeah. it just, thing just broke and fell apart. And that's what I had left, <laughs> you know, and I, I really didn't know where to go. So I just kept, I kept working at it and learning. And uh, the Nagadami scriptures followed closely behind. The Colburn really blew my mind. Um, they started building everything. But most importantly, um, I'm, I'm a hermetic today. Um, so the, the teachings of Hermes um, really um, enhanced my Christian beliefs, honestly. Um, that, really no, that's did. the crazy thing, too, is when those other beliefs maybe even solidify some of the, oh, the, it's, it's the, the like the deeper, foundation. you know what I'm saying, truths <laughs> are there. Because I think in Christianity, we think that th that's all original. Most of the stuff that Paul yeah. <laughs> and Jesus were quoting, like there was nothing original. Like they're, most of the time they're quoting the Old Testament. And then when we get in deeper, the Old Testament, a lot of that stuff is <laughs> quoting other works yeah, yeah. from the other nations who were around at that time as well. As so far as the architecture, the quotes, the wording, the stories, all of that stuff. So to go back 
to find something that solidifies that truth even deeper reading the seven hermetic principles and then reading the scriptures and there's there's essences that you pick up on like man okay that's a universal law the bible saying it this is saying it that's saying it okay yeah, it's, they're, it's they're all they're all in agreement <laughs> Yep. With different wording, different phrasing, but the spirit and essence is there. Yep. The same with, um, you know, might have to help you with this term here, uh, the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> Bhagavad Gita, yeah, 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 yeah Bhagavad yeah. Gita, yeah. Well, In the yeah. Vedas, yeah. Along the way, man, Christ before Christ, Jesus before Jesus. <laughs> um, it just, you know, I, I read it and I was totally amazed on uh, what I received from it. So, um, you know, and, and that's my whole thing. Um, it, God is universal. Um, every way, the way you see God, the way I see God, the way those listening right now see God, it's seriously personal. <laughs> there is no two people that see God the same. Mm -hmm. even, even in church of 500 people who hear the same message every week um, and mm -hmm. go by the same doctrine, everybody has a little twist to their faith that the other person can't understand or mm -hmm. doesn't see. Uh, eye to eye on. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's just, it's the fact that people, what bothers me on that is that people feel like they can tell you how to believe, how to see God and how to worship God. Um, that I don't understand anymore. And don't get me wrong, Derek, I was there, dude. I, I was that guy after uh, getting up at 7.38 to go uh, do worship rehearsal um, before church in the morning. And if I saw someone jogging along the side of the road, I would be ripping them apart in my head. Like, why are you going to church? <laughs> yeah. You know what I mean? So I, I was self-righteous and legalistic myself. And I'm glad I was because honestly, it has my mouth shut now. <laughs> and I, I don't say much <laughs> because I was there and I remember. Well, that's um, what I want to, I want to ask you too, because, um, one of the things I've got a friend of mine who's given his life over to Christian evangelism. Like he's like, determined to win his whole city to Jesus, right? And he's doing a really good job at trying to do that. That's what God's called him to do. That's his passion. And I, I'm friends with him. He doesn't agree with what I do. But um, um, we talk I about do. being a universalist. Or you say you do? <laughs> Thank you, sir. Um, I love your art, too. <laughs> we talk, if we talk about being a universalist, right, there's this, um, if God's going to save everybody, right, um, if you even believe that, and like, that can that can maybe get complicated because that's there's even the whole hell concept was stolen anyway from other other traditions as well. So, but the majority of Christendom believes in hell or claim they do. This this you know the the lake of fire, eternal punishment. Um, being a universalist or one saying that Jesus died for everybody or God loves everybody, it takes away the urgency to win the lost like these people are lost we have to win them and there's an urgency because if they die tomorrow they're going to perish and burn forever being a universalist and i've listened to call uh you know early carlton peterson stuff and even listen to um the christian evangelists who are against jesus dying for everybody because they know that it's going to silence them it like takes away their only thing not that god's goodness can lead men to repentance, but God's wrath and God's anger that he wants to destroy you type deal. And so with God saving or God loving everybody, it takes, so they, they say it takes that away. Um, it doesn't, if you approach even the gospel from a universalist point of view, it's not something that God is going to do or Jesus is going to do, but he's already done. And we're just here to proclaim the wonderful work of what Christ has already done for everybody. So that there's still the urgency there that people are now living in hell. They're not going to live in hell. They're now living in hell. Now. And we have, we have the ticket to get them out now, not later. Um, but you just said to kind of go with that notion a little bit that it kind of s silenced you a little bit of your e uh, evangel evangel evangelistic evangel approach because obviously you came from that. It's me too. I'm not, I don't want to debate. I don't want to judge. I don't want to point fingers because I used to do that. So there's that reminding of the nasty old Christian that I once was, but obviously it hasn't silenced you that much. You're, you're writing no. books. You're, you're still book. getting information out about God, the idea of God. Where, where are you now with wanting to tell people 
about God? I mean, heck, well, the, 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 you know, I, a real important point is that um, with uh, when I came out the back end of this, um, I realized every when I was a, when I was a Christian actively involved in the church, everything was everything that went bad was Satan's fault. Everything that was good was God. <laughs> when I came out of that, Satan doesn't exist to me, man. Yeah. Gone from my map. Um, and you know what? <laughs> it, it's true, man. You know where Satan was the whole time? You. Right inside me, man. Um, you had the and, opportunity to play him. Yeah. <laughs> um, so when I realized that and started working on that part of me, it, I stopped blaming things that were supposedly outside of me, like I didn't yeah. have control of. And you know what? I have a lot more control in my life these days. Uh, be a God, of course, uh, because I, I live for God. And my witness is, uh, I have the books, of course, that's great. Um, but my witness is my personality, my character, your life, my life, man. And I, life and I do, down, yeah. I, I'm in there, I'm doing, I took the same things that I enjoyed. Um, we still sponsor kids from, um, one child from compassion for over 15 years now, uh, in Peru, my wife's from Peru. So that's cool connection. Um, we sponsor families out on the res in South Dakota, Pine Ridge reservation, um, a grandmother raising seven, eight kids, uh, grandchildren of her own. Um, with her kids in the house too. Um, so I took from, and that's a really cool part, man. I, I used to pay for heating and electric at a church and um, <laughs> bills at a body, you know what I mean? Um, and then of course they, they do take money towards missions and people going away and public things. Don't, don't, I don't want to take away from that. Yeah. But every month now, man, I, my money just goes direct. To the needs of the people period and i don't need other people to tell me where the needs are because i have a good enough heart to look for them and i found that, them that's a revelation in itself and the freedom it that oh, you it, get from like okay i you know the money that i would spend on tithe because it just kind of goes to the building fund or <laughs> the playground well, you, know, at the I mean, you have to pay the mortgage you have to pay the pastor you have to pay the secretaries and then then it gets down to the bottom and those needs are sometimes met and I don't want to well, take it, away. From no, that no, no, no. Yeah, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. If you was to take that money that you paid, no, I know. Think about it. Close every church this Sunday. Close all of them, and that money that all the people would have spent, put it on a table and let it go out to the world to the needs yeah. of the people. It would be solved in one day. It's just. A, it's just a deep <laughs> revelation, or just like a. a and I would. I would encourage people to do this. If you're paying tithes, if you're funding a ministry or something, maybe one month. If you want to keep doing that, that's good. Like I said, if the, but they should make it, you know, if we don't, you know, this money goes towards bills. If you enjoy the building, you enjoy what we have here, it takes money. So that that is legit. But take that money yourself and maybe go out to eat and pay for a couple who are just yeah. sitting down across from you on the other side. You don't even know. They don't even know that you're going to pay for that meal. Like I, we started doing that and just doing practical stuff like, hey, we can actually see where our money is going out and impacting people now. We can fund other people's ministry or whatever the case is. To, and it's not we're just, hey, we're writing a check to the church. And, yes. and, and you do share a part in that because whatever that church is doing, you're a part of it. So you're a body there. But when you can personalize it, man, it was just like I didn't, I never had 50 extra dollars to go out to eat and say, hey, I'm going to buy these people's meal and not even tell them that I did it. We're just going to walk out and, you know what I'm saying? And, 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 <laughs> Yeah. pray over it you know what i'm saying hopefully god will you know you, you never know like that could be that couple's like last 50 bucks that they wanted to go out and eat and spend time together and now yeah. it's taken care of it could be an answered prayer i've seen god do that in my life and and and, and uh being obedient with listening and asking god what what you should do with your money right yeah, yeah. versus just uh oh, here's that damn Again, let's yeah, actually, one of, the, one of the funny experiences I always remember in my head was uh, there was a section in my city where the people would stand. Well, it, it wasn't a normal corner. I think that's why it kind of caught me off guard. But I gave my last 20 bucks to them and I had to go to my mom's house to get money from her because I had no money for gas. <laughs> so it's just like I'm always I'm always living in the moment, man. If somebody's needs more important than mine. Uh, I'm there. You know yeah. what I mean? Actually, they, they are because I, I with my wife and kids, bro, I, I have everything. Yeah, I'm blessed. beyond blessed. I have no needs um, whatsoever. So it, it's easy for me to look outside mm -hmm. um, and, and see the needs of the people. Yeah. And that's why with my wife and I, we, we look into uh, the youth. We sponsor uh, 
um, three Native American schools, um, St. Joseph's, uh, Red Cloud, and St. Labre out in South Dakota and Wyoming, um, Native Hope. Um, I, I have a connection with Standing Rock, getting out there and stuff like that. Yeah, and, I know your whole uh, story. Back, yeah. that, that, that was a big part of it too, bro. In Back in well, 2011, instead- 2012 was when I literally found out about the Native Americans and their plight and what we did to them. And I never realized that's, that's one of my, with the great spirit. And I, when I went out there and realized that they're serving the same God, man, and they don't call him Jesus. You know what I mean? And the great spirits upon them, uh, beautiful people, uh, well more evolved and advanced than most of us Europeans are uh, mentally with their thinking, you know? So it just changed me, man. Yeah. It was a big part of my awakening too, is going back to the powwow. But when I first got saved, I went to the powwow. They're chanting on drums and acting like chickens and got feathers on. And I'm like very sensitive because I just came out of witchcraft, right? And I go to that. I'm like, oh, I got to get up out of here, man. These demons out here. And it's so weird how your perception changes. Like I went there like, man, they're chanting the gods and invoking spirits of the chickens and stuff. You know, I was like, we got to get up out of here. And then I went back several years later when God started doing a deeper work in me and I'm going there and I'm just in tears and feel the Holy spirit moving through the air and just bringing me to tears and showing me this is all they have left. It's just like this one day a year where they, we get to share it with them and open it up. But man, these people were a loving, peaceful people that were overtaken and man, just the whole spirit of that. But that, that was a big point of, of my awakening. But before we get too far off, because I know we're not off, everything we're talk, touching about is good. <laughs> but let, let's get back to uh, the whole phase of exiting the church because you read the shack. Um, so, and I wanted to say about the shack, there's a lot of churches that were, were actually backing that book and promoting it. But then there was a whole pushback from um, the Christian community, another side saying that it would yeah, it sure. would lead you into other faves, or it would do to you, <laughs> it would do <laughs> to other people what it did to you. So there were people warning people to stay away from it. Yeah, sure. You read the shack, you got into the other scriptures, other texts, you started seeing God in everything. How did that start coming out in your speech to get a target on your back and things like that to kind of be like, we don't want you here anymore type deal in church? Well, the, the book you hold up, you held up the word of Gnosis. I, I started in 2011. So in two, early 2012, um, I started going to a new church and it's kind of ironic because um, the sound person was an atheist. Um, they would open up with Bob Marley or Tom Petty, um, <laughs> hats, um, piercings all over the place, different colored hair. Yeah. Um, it made me feel at home. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, but yeah, it's not, it wasn't what I was used to. Um, so this is the body I was in at the time that I got um, pretty much asked to leave. Um, so what what I did and what I wanted people to know was I was blessed by the culprit. When people ask me, uh, well, no, people don't ask me. When I tell people <laughs> my house is on fire, grab one book. Uh, what book would it be? Um, it's the Colburn. Um, it blew me away. Uh, Egyptian academics, 1500. It actually tells about the Egyptian side of the Exodus. Um, and that also goes into the Druids, um, early, uh, maybe 200 to 500 AD, uh, CE. Um, and the book itself was hidden for many, many years. Um, so when I read it, um, I needed, I wanted people to know about it. So I put it in the word of Gnosis in pieces, uh, along with Enoch, uh, Revelation, uh, the Epic of Gilgamesh, um, and Hermes Palmadris. Um, but I wanted people to know the Colburn. It didn't seem like it was known. Um, so my first version of the word Gnosis was literally the Bible size. And, and I did create it like a Bible uh, with a lot of Jesus throughout. Um, but I, I pulled a lot of the Colburn out, hopefully to get people's eyes open to the book. Um, I, I guess there's still maybe some controversy about the book itself, where it came from. Um, I mentioned to you, I've been in and out of Freemasonry, um, but one of the reasons why I got into Freemasonry was because supposedly for 800 years, the Freemasons protected the book, if I understand the story correctly. Um, And it made me very interested because I felt like I owed somebody some gratitude for serving the book for me uh, without it being destroyed like so many other books in history. Um, So the Colburn was a huge, huge, huge part of... um, so while you were in church, you, 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 you were just writing the book. You wasn't being vocal. You wasn't 
going to not Bible so studies. Good, so much. Or... The only thing was like I was changing my Bibles. I had the original Bible, like the first Bible. You know what I mean? With the sixteen eleven. Like, what? What do you say? The sixteen eleven Bible. Or uh, I have it on my shelf, but I don't want to run away. What, what are you talking about with the, with the <laughs> like um, was, apocrypha it was, in it? Is it the Anderson Bible or something like that? It was. I'm not sure. It has a lot of the. Um, I, I know some people listening probably are saying it out loud right now. Um, yep. It's not the the apocrypha in it with the no, twelve. Let, you know, let me go get books. it. It is, it is important. Hold on one second. Very important to know the original Bible. There's a bunch of them. I've got the sixteen eleven. I do have that. Which the sixteen eleven version has the fourteen books that were taken out and considered the apocrypha. So sorry, I'm back. Which, okay, it's which the one? Synodicus. Okay. You, you ever hear of it? Heard of it. Don't know much about it though. Um, but. The thing was, it has the epistle of Barnabas in it and the shepherd of Hermes, uh, the teaching of the Twelve. Um, so oh, the, started, you're talking about the uh, the gospel of the Holy Twelve? Yeah, 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 yeah. So I started going to church and Bible studies with something different. I laid down <laughs> on the table and people started looking at me different. So yeah. I kind of slowly did it without being... Um, Over? Yeah. Over I, I definitely wasn't pushing anything on anybody. I was curious on how it related and if I could sit down with a different book and get the same message or have the same message. So... Yeah. It has all the original uh, books of the Bible, but it has like the Catholic Bible, more or less the other texts, you know, the original texts <laughs> that were in. So this supposedly is the original New Testament. Um, and it was times like those that I slowly started kind of evolving. But like I said, it wasn't, I, I don't know. Where did I wasn't the con contention come from once you, once the book was out or what? Yeah. Well, what happened was um, it's so strange because the pastor I was with at the time, did end up dying from cancer and I was serving him. Um, he had plenty of people to help him. And the only reason why I say that is because I had my kidney, my left kidney removed um, through many surgeries. And, you know, I showed up praise and worship with uh, JP drains out my back, <laughs> literally stuck in my cargo pants, you know, and if you look, you'd see the blood kind of going through the tubes and stuff. And I'd be in praise and worship on Sunday. And I'd be up there on stage playing my bass uh, very much. Uh, uh, part of the whole. Um, I didn't want to be removed from my ministry. And with that, I was serving the pastor because uh, he was going through chemo and he was pretty young, um, somewhere around 50, 55. Um, so, and I was part of his Bible study at his house and it was a small group. Um, so more or less, he had another gentleman taking me out to lunch to talk to me about my book kind of privately behind my back. And I caught on to it after his second meeting. Um, at first, the guy made it sound like he was interested in what I was writing, but <laughs> then I, I love listening it when they do speech. that hey man what's that new uh book you got <laughs> yeah so more or less they, they use this this other guy to kind of yeah. gauge what i was doing because i gave it to the pastor because i wanted to be real with him i said you know here's my book check it out you know let me know what you think um so i was being up front wasn't trying to hide anything um i even had designers working with me for uh, a book of enoch that i was going to be doing myself um really cool artwork and when when everything hit the fan um that dude was like you know paying me my money back felt like he made a deal with the devil um the pastor yeah. got together with me oh my um, god with, i've i've been the, very similar instances yeah the graphical so i stuff. mean yeah. uh, more or less, he pulled my wife and me into the office, but he didn't speak much. It was the assistant pastor who took over the church um, that was doing a lot of the talking. And it was more of him um, that ended up making the call, if you ask me. I, I think my pastor kind of digged me because we were supposed to go see um, the Dead Sea Scrolls in Philadelphia. They were on a tour. And at the Bible study, he's like, hey, why don't all these guys go down and check out the Dead Sea Scrolls in Philadelphia? So, you know, he was open and stuff. Um, I knew that, but there was something else. The people at the church loved me and my wife. We're very outgoing. We were, uh, this specific church, we were last ones in and the last ones out <laughs> um, kind of thing. Um, so we were just very able to get along with. Uh, we liked talking to a lot of people, um, being transparent as much as possible too in that part. But um, we were a threat because if I just, you know, didn't talk to many people and I was just kind of sitting there and writing a book, I, I doubt any of this would even happen. Uh, but because I had people um, working for me, um, was very much involved, um, I guess they thought it as a threat. Yeah. Um, so the question just came down to, you know, is Jesus God? We were sitting there and I just said, no, man, he's not. <laughs> not, not to me, he's not. Yeah. Um, Jesus, Jesus is God 
you better believe it. That's the right way to say it. <laughs> but um, I can't see man as being the great spirit. Uh, we are all in, endowed with something that is bigger than us. Um, mm -hmm. And God resonates through everything and everyone. And I've read enough, enough texts, uh, whether people believe in them or not by Jesus, and he's not preaching that message. Uh, even in the Aquarian gospel, you held up I, one of my favorite quotes is Jesus is like, what does it matter to me if you're saved or not? <laughs> and it, I mean, that's totally that, that that's a mind crusher for Christians in the body, you mm -hmm. know. Um, so to me, Jesus is my God, because that's how I found God. You know what I mean? It's my entrance. It's my door. It's my yeah, master. He's the door. You know I mean? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Christ consciousness. You know, I, I hope nobody gets my terminology wrong today. It's just. And I, I even struggle with that because, you know, being hermetic and stuff like that, I was like, well, okay, you know, I've read books that said he didn't exist, he wasn't the same person, you know, it's just uh, a shadow of an, another uh, guru from years gone by, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, and I've gone full circle and even spoke to my wife about it, that like I walked the path, the heart path. And I think you and me spoke about this too a little bit. So the teachings of Jesus, stuff like that, that that's my bread and butter, man. Yeah. It's what resonates with me. It's who I want to be. Well, Jesus and some of the prophets and some of those other texts and other people in Egypt and in India, they spoke about something called the way. I'm a Amen. follower of the way. Even some of those early transcripts of Jesus says that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Some of the earlier translations says I am of the way. I am a follower of the way, the truth, and the life. Like, yeah. like that, That's the path I'm on. And I, I know people who say, you know, a lot of people get caught up with the term Christian. They're not a Christian because if I say I'm a Christian, it's so funny here. People ask me that, you know, are you a Christian? And for like the core tenets, I would say yes. But as far as any of the doctrinal stuff, no, not really. You know, I yeah, disagree yeah. with the majority of it, but I'm a follower of Christ. And so a lot of people have kind of adopted. I'm a follower of the way, the way Amen. meaning a path yes. that Jesus was on or a way meaning the path that Jesus set, that, whatever the case is. Um, people are in here asking about John D'Allegro and the Christian mushroom cult and if Jesus <laughs> existed and stuff. There's a difference <laughs> between... I didn't know. Why didn't you tell me? <laughs> <laughs> there's yeah. a difference between Jesus, Christian, early biblical Christianity, and the Catholic Church. Some people, A lot of people like to kind of tie that together. Like They think Christianity is like the Catholic Church or whatever. But yeah. if, you're, if you're following Christ, like as far as from the earliest manuscripts of the scriptures, maybe even some of the other texts you're talking about, uh, definitely books that were taken out and stuff, more of a spiritual path. They took those books out, but um, it's different. It's not we're talking about following Christ is, is not really Catholicism, right? You're not even close to that, right? Yeah. Not that I'm it, against it. it. It's your own path or whatever, but it's just not the same thing when we mention the path of Christ or the church or whatever the case is. A lot of people yeah. don't know that for, you know, in Christianity, we know there's a very big distinction between the two. We're not that we're not Mormon. We're not this. We're not Jehovah's witness. We are evangelicals. We're not Catholic. Catholics is a false religion, but some, you know, people on the outside, they just kind of lump everything, you know, all the yeah, churchianity sure. stuff together. Right. Yeah. Bundle package. <laughs> that's interesting though too because when i was around all the born again <laughs> i remember how they would beat up on catholics my wife that's what i'm saying yeah 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 my wife was raised catholic dude she's a beautiful woman and i wouldn't have it any other way and i'm so glad when she didn't know where to go or what to do she ended up in the catholic church and it saved and preserved her for me uh through all the trials that she went through but i just remember a lot of christians are like you know damn catholicism and yeah. you know it's all a bunch of garbage and honestly you know that's where chris the ideal christian does, originated with catholicism i don't care it's part of the tree so you can't really uh throw the baby out with the bathwater is <laughs> all i'm saying so it, it might have evolved but you know it was yeah, there first it, yeah. i mean it wasn't there first but i mean it was there. no <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> you know Peter was so the first a, pope honestly, <laughs> no and you know what I mean? That's amazing too, because being, you know, being a brother and going through masonry and stuff like that, King James, you know, creating the Bible and sticking it all together the way he did, it's only a 400 year old thing. <laughs> so I, you know, everybody's like, this is the word of God. And you know, this is what stands and it's 400 years old. I know, I know all the other texts are a thousand years old and some yeah. are even older, you know, but still it's like, if they look into who created it and why he created it, I don't know, man. 
because that same person that created it, I went into the, to, into the, uh, the brotherhood and, you know, they don't, they don't believe in Jesus besides a, a great prophet. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just interesting when people don't do their homework and they don't look at the history of what they're believing. It, they're pretty much just kind of living on, on the coattails of others and at times yeah. lives too. There's somebody here. Um, Bell star, uh, says that King James wrote a book about demons too. He wrote a book on demonology. I don't know if you've read it. I want to, I want to read it. I haven't read it yet, but, um, there's, um, it's kind of hard to read while well, I have found some PDFs online. Yeah. But he actually wrote a, a book on demonology. It's accredited to him. No, I know. Uh, and I, I heard her some, uh, some wicked stories about the man himself. And yeah. I remember seeing a little bit when I, I first found out about it, but I never really went after it more to find yeah. out who the man King James was. Yeah. Uh, but I do know a little bit to know that it was supposedly a rough history with the guy too. All of uh, those guys, you know, the Cedric <laughs> Bozier and the image that we have for Christ as rapist and molesters yep. and all kind of crazy stuff. But let, let's talk about this though, because there's something there. We, you talked about a while ago, you, you don't know what Jesus is, who he is, uh, if he really existed. You, you say that because it's the truth, because you don't have any proof. You can't physically say, oh, yeah, he's real. Like I had dinner with him or whatever. You, you can't prove it, right? So to say that for, for without the shadow of a doubt that Jesus existed, his name was Yahshua ben Yosef. There's all of these records there's all kind of stuff disproving that stuff as well. So if we're into gnosis, if we're into studying, right? And, and and there's people who say he's just a fairy tale. He's made up. He never existed. But here you're talking about you follow, you're following the path of someone who never existed. Um, I was on a podcast with someone who was we were talking about this the similar thing, and uh, he was asking me, okay, all this stuff debunking Jesus, and what do you say? Is like something is there like when you pray to god yeah, the great that, that spirit I, I didn't want to lose whatever that is i, I don't know some, what it was, but i didn't want to lose it <laughs> something's I, there it, it responds to jesus yeah. it responds to yep. great spirit i've had it bring me back to the nomadic way of weaving yeah. like <laughs> it responds to a broken spirit and contrite heart of looking up to heaven and saying god i need help right and i think most of those religions or spiritual paths or holy men have kind of come to the same conclusion of going within praying and meditating and connecting with something within you that is outside of you and within at the same time as above so below with the creator that responds and answers to jesus is one of the names i can't say it's the only way like i haven't like that's my way it's the way that we were introduced to god or the creator was through this path right and there's something there. And you know what changed me too? Um, one of the things, the first part isn't just we Jesus sent his disciples out to forgive sins. It's in the Bible. You know what I mean? It changes the whole dynamics of what the church stands on. Because if Jesus is going to send his followers out, that they can actually go out and forgive sins. Yeah. Why, why the cross? I know the cross. I know the Egyptian cross. I, I know the cross. It's all good. Um, but what really changed me was that the scriptures narrow is the gate and a few find it. Yeah. Um, there's billions, millions of Christians, <laughs> there's, there's Muslims. They're all over the world. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, narrow though, real narrow. And only a few find it. And one day after reading it hundreds of times, I was like, what? A- and then the point of you can even do greater things than these. So if people are going to exalt Jesus and he's going to look me in the face and tell me that I can even do greater things than him. I'm on board. Take my hand, teach me how to do it. <laughs> Make me like you. You know what I mean? So it's just like you, you so many exalt Jesus as God. Fine. He said you can do even greater things. So if he said that you can do even greater things than God, where do you stand? That's what changed my life. Yeah, that's, you know a, yeah, that's a big one. It is big. It's a it big one. Big. It's a big one with the Christians too. It's like they they kind of like. I think what they did with you is something that they do, or we we have done, is they like start breaking everything down to figure out what they don't, what you don't agree with that goes along with them. Okay, what about Jesus? Was he God? And if you was to say yeah, they would say okay. What about tithing? Is God gonna curse you if you tithe? No, he won't curse you. 
Oh, you know, they try to keep going through yeah. the, this checklist and they're like, okay, this is what we got them on. Right. Cause I've been taught, I've talked to the, the, the Christians or whatever in the path who were doing that to me. And they were like the whole Jesus is God thing versus Jesus is the son of God. Yep. And I'm saying, you know, I'm blatant. Like, I don't think he's God, man. I think he worships the father. He showed us how to worship the father. He is the son of God, uh, showing us the way he pr prays to the father. He's not schizophrenic. God did not leave the throne and become a man as we have taught in youth group. Yeah, God left his throne in heaven <laughs> and became a man. He was tempted in every way. It's like that. I don't think that's, it's not happened, you know? And, uh, but they were wanting me to say that Jesus was God. Versus the son of God. I say, look, he's the expression of the father. He's the image of the father. He's made in the likeness. You know what I'm saying? I'm good. I'm okay with everything else. But fought, but saying that Jesus was God. And so, okay, there's the, there's the, we can't walk together because can two walk together unless they agree. And you don't think that Jesus was God. I'm like, man, I'm re I'm just quoting the scriptures as they're written. <laughs> and that was the yeah, son yeah. of God. Didn't the sign say everybody welcome? Until you. <laughs> have a voice or you have an opinion until you have an opinion you can't have an opinion have you heard uh, I, I put i put this at the end of one of my songs have you heard um uh billy graham uh talking about how um jesus because you were talking about the, the path or whatever and there's all these millions of christians and you and then earlier you were saying a lot of them just show up they're just there 90 percent of them so Ten percent is a it, so you said ninety yeah. percent just show up. Ten percent is is kind of a narrow road, right? Yeah, that seems like a lot, actually. <laughs> <laughs> but it's still a lot. Um, Sorry. but um, uh, so uh, Billy Graham talked about um, uh, Jesus having a people uh, for his namesake out of every religion. Uh, they may not even have heard the name of Jesus, but they're still followers of Christ. They may be. Hindu, Amen. they may be Muslim. Benny, I'm not Benny. Um, I just said his name. Um, Billy Graham said yeah. that. Uh, and I'll put it at the end of one of my songs. Have you heard that quote? Um, I might have. I what song by any chance? Uh, well, it's at the end of um, Syncretism. Okay, I probably did, but I maybe just kind of got past me. Syncretism. Yeah, it's at the end, and uh, it's pretty powerful. That was part of the awakening too. Your, is like your songs are powerful, Derek. Just thank so. you, sir. I love them, man. The words are great. They sure are, man. You do a great job, man. It was, it was part of the revelation, man, of just understanding that um, Billy Graham, the greatest yeah, sure. evan uh, evangelical preacher of our time, who's won the most people to Jesus and done the good work, fought the good fight, at the end of his life, when everything is almost done, he's getting to the end of his life, he's putting out statements saying, God has a people for his namesake out of every religion who they don't even know. He pretty much said they're Christians and they don't know it. Well, you know the stories when like the uh, Spanish conquistadors came into Mesoamerica and stuff and started putting people at the edge of the sword and saying, you know, accept Jesus or die more or less. They would tell stories on what their witness was. And the, the Native Americans uh, would be saying, we know them. We know him. We know who you speak about without even knowing who Jesus was because it was the same person that they believed in without the tag of Europe. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I mean, that's just kind of a roundabout way to say it. But there's so many stories about, you know, people being told what to believe. And they were like, we've believed it all along. It, it's not a new message or a new savior to us. Um, you hear about it all the time in many of the different religions and the stories throughout the world of um, kind of the crusades, <laughs> you know, when people are forced to believe in something and they're like, well, we believe it, but it's just not, you know, your, it's not your Jesus or, you know, the, the way you're presenting it, but we've known for quite some time about this. They'll say, well, that's no, another he, Jesus. That's not <laughs> yeah. a different one. <laughs> yeah. It's a different one. That was, so that I, was even, that was even kind of deep for me. I talked about like, um, my daughter, uh, trying to lead her to Jesus at like five years old. Okay. There's this prayer. Yeah. You got to pray. You got to ask Jesus into your heart. You know, and trying to do the same way that that I came to God, trying to. She had no idea what I was talking about. She's like, I already know Jesus. Like, I already have him in my heart. What do you? I said, you got to pray this prayer and ask him to come in and ask him to forgive you. Like, I've already, already know him. You know what I'm saying? It's the innocence of yeah. a child. It blew my mind. I was like, no, you have to, you have to pray this prayer. 
to know what he did for you on the cross and ask him to come in. She's like, I already know him. What are you talking about? A little kid. She couldn't understand it. Maybe when life she, kicks she, in. She already, she already knew. <laughs> I, she already knew. There's an, there's an, cause there's an innocence there, right? Maybe when life kicks in and things like that, and you can understand mm-hmm. what's going Closest on. Source, man. That's why my daughters were baptized when they were young, but you know, they dedicated, sorry. Um, their baptism, um, if they choose it, it, that's up to them, man. You know, I've seen people um, come in, get baptized and live a hell of a life. And I mean, in a bad way. Um, yeah. And other people that say uh, the sinner's prayer thing always bothered the heck out of me. Um, I was around some Jesus cult people. I love that term um, that thought the sinner's prayer saved everybody. You say these words and you are going to heaven, but you Gotta can get go you out to say it, man. Yeah. You just say go it. out and live like a devil the rest of the day. Yeah. And it's all good. Cause you said that prayer. It's just so bunk, man. <laughs> you know, it really is. Um, but yeah, like I said, it depends who, who you're with and who you were brought up with in church, but it was kind of my misery. <laughs> well, let me ask you about this too, so with the whole church thing is like, you, you came into it being a musician, playing on the worship team and stuff like that. Um, and a lot of people, if they don't know any better, they get r- uh, run through the ringer because they have a talent. You come into the church and you can play music. Get him up there. We need a yeah, bass. Yeah. We need a bassist. Get him up there. Now you're in a ministry. Now you have to walk this n- narrow road. Now you have to keep a standard that we don't even hold ourselves to. But if you f- falter off the road you know, on this pedestal now that you're on, you're going to be in trouble. Well, we heard that you were doing this. We heard that you were doing that. And I've seen uh, people who come into the church with with a talent and they throw them up there. Yeah. They're a good performer. Well, they're good. Everybody's an usher first, though. Piano saying, I've seen them jump straight. <laughs> I'll say this. One of no, the it's, last. It's still true, though. <laughs> I went into a church, one of my old churches. Someone would come in fresh off the street, and a pastor was looking for a youth pastor, and he'd call him out. You, the future youth pastor, random people. And they're like, me? He's like just giving roles to people because they were just building the church and like, you're this, you're that. And then he would jack them up because they would become the youth pastor. He'd say, Hey, I need somebody to lead the the youth. And I feel like God said it was you and blah, blah, blah. And they get them in there, right? They're just a visitor at this point, maybe two, three weeks in. And then now they have to lead Bible studies and lead the youth. And they do something that the pastor didn't like, or the leadership didn't like. And then they cut their head off. Like it was a girl who, who, uh, the pastor did, did that too. And the pastor, uh, they seen a picture of her on Facebook where she went to her class reunion and had a glass of wine at her ten, uh, her uh, ten year class reunion. They seen it. That somebody shared it on Facebook. They pulled her to the side. You can't be doing that. We're gonna have to let you go. Like these taking these people who, or if you want to call them baby Christians or whatever, but they just throw people up in these positions and stuff. And when they fall, man, when you go through that, or if you quit playing guitar. You're not the you're not the dude anymore. You're a regular member. You just yeah. go back out into the congregation. You don't we, like we can't really use you, man. It's it's messed that's a lot what, of people up. I've got I've got thing. friends, dude, who are in my book psalmist. They're psalmist. When they play the stringed instrument, something happens. Yeah, and they Amen. don't they won't touch <laughs> it anymore because they've been hurt by the church. Yeah. They've been on leadership. They've been great worship leaders, and then crazy stuff happened with you know going through and the pastor didn't care about them they just cared if they can play hey we just still need you to do these songs or i don't care about your pornography addiction i need you to do these songs you know all of this kind of stuff or hey don't don't pray don't talk about grieving over your sin and fasting just play these songs and it's like just this mechanical thing and it's messed up a lot of people yeah yep yep yeah it's a shame man I always say I, I overshot the church <laughs> because even the church I, I was asked to leave, you know, it was okay to have an atheist in the sound booth, but God forbid somebody that was actually following the shoes of Jesus um, in the footsteps of Jesus and going out to seek all, all the knowledge that um, we can, you know, I, and that's another thing too. I mean, there's so many knowledge gurus these days, you know, I, I dig the gnosis thing. It's kind yeah. of, I'm building my business upon it. It's all good, but um, it, I'm thankful that God has my heart, man. Uh, it's always been a heart issue with me. Yeah. And the knowledge does not work if your heart isn't pure. 
and I'm learning that um, and knowledge is good, but if it's not applied, it's just rubbish. Um, so yeah. it's good to know, but if, if you don't apply what you know, it's just, it's, it's worthless. And if it's you not know, helping I, you. So, so it's not knowledge. Practical, practical knowledge too, right? Yeah, Making yeah. it practical, like how, like, okay, what does that benefit you that this is the way that works or that's the way that that unfolds or what that system or that hierarchy is? How are you, is it, is it helping you or is it making you paranoid when you go out in public? Do you stick to yourself? I know those people too. Super smart people. Biblical knowledge. Um, when it comes to yeah. InfoWars <laughs> and Alex Jones knowledge, like yeah, they, yeah. they're really good, but they, you know, it gets them to a place where they just, they just withdraw. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. The lucky thing for me is I know the Bible better than most pastors. So, I mean, I, I, I'm one of those people, I can't give you the verse, but I can quote it for you. And it's usually on my heart. It's been engraved in my heart. So I use, it's been very useful and resourceful for me. And that's why it's like, you know, I can't, I always say it's like kind of kicking your mother. If, if I'm going to say Christianity or the church is um, of no use because it is, because yeah. I'm here, you know what I mean? It, it's the path I took, but yet when it came time to, uh, grow beyond that original kind of like foundation elementary people, yeah 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 and you know that's what it's meant for man it's you know get people in and you know um so when i decided that there was something bigger and uh the holy spirit and uh christ was telling me go bigger go better <laughs> i i did but other people didn't understand yeah you know? same here I, I had a close friend of mine who has who has uh stuck with me this whole time there's only a couple people who have stuck there thank god for those people yeah um, there's Amen. only a couple but um even them like one, one of my friends he was like man I, I just i just think you got you got tired of the bible man you just you just you, he said he said i think you got bored with the bible i was like hold on that wasn't the bible's like <laughs> it's not boring that's not why i started reading the lost books i'm like i'm trying to read the books they took out and would see and understand yeah, right. why they took them out like that's it's not that the Bible was boring. Like there's so much or even, wisdom. Or even why why were the, why were the Catholic Church or the Christians or the Crusaders trying to burn everything else and destroy everything else so there would just be one book? What was yeah. so wrong with all the other books? What was in them that actually made sense and elevated people above the brute beast? You know, <laughs> um, obviously there, it was a threat <laughs> to their religion and their um, what they were trying to do. So I mean, it's a shame. So much of it is lost, but. Um, it, it's 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 a it's a business um and when you threaten that business you get a target on your back you know like you did with the with the church like yeah uh, so it's like you can't keep going there because when they're going to ask you about jesus or ask you about what books belong in the bible or whatever when that stuff comes up you're you're going to be a threat yeah. you know just like all that stuff's a threat just like people questioning the bible or questioning uh, any, any, just doctrine, man. I'm just with the doctrine stuff. Like, if you just disagree with anything, the whole tithing thing I, I, I mentioned a while ago. They, they, a lot of them preach tithing as, a, as, a, as a means of control to get your money. They put you under bondage and say that God's gonna, if you don't give your ten percent, God's gonna find a way to take it from you. They, that's what we were taught coming up in church, and and so every time we had something bad happen, we thought it was God taking it because we weren't able to pay the t the tithe the 10 percent um so h here you are being liberated from that or coming to a different understanding in the bible that that's not true i know the pastor said that but it's not true yeah, you can't you know go what? around doing that like they're gonna <laughs> you said give to caesar what caesar and give to god what's god yeah you're probably those, these people paying their tithe probably aren't giving enough to god mm -hmm. <laughs> actually if you ask me yeah. it's that the tithing thing is definitely old testament and archery <laughs> it's it's how they keep the building up yeah, so, well, yeah and, and that's a good principle like i said if you believe in that building yeah yeah somebody's no, got it we got to fund it you know what i'm saying it gives you joy and you know that's where you yeah. go worship and all that stuff you know I, I remember it's all good you know i i do miss praise and worship as it is that's probably what i miss most um mm -hmm. i really don't miss the fakeness of the whole thing and not everybody is you know uh, that's for sure there's a lot of beautiful people um so it's, but it's when people start telling you what, what your path is, what God wants from you and what to believe, that's where it just gets a little rough. Um, so, but uh, I can twist it a little bit here on the word of Gnosis because uh, my introduction on the book actually goes into the, the, uh, 
the Giza Plateau, uh, Puma Punko, um, Goba Teki in Turkey, and uh, the City of the Gods in Mexico, Teotihuacan. And you got that was these, the demons, brother. Yeah, sure. <laughs> so, so you got all these these buildings um, all around the world. Um, and if when when you read the introduction, um, you realize that these buildings were actually more or less what we consider to be nuclear reactors that we use today, uh, power sources of ancient. So when you actually take the God of the Old Testament and make him one of these beings coming down from the sky. It changes religion, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, I, that, I use scripture in the word of Gnosis that, you know, this is a part that I love. <laughs> um, they say that Satan was in the Garden of Eden, right? Um, beautiful cherubim. Um, when I read the word, <laughs> when I read the Bible, it says that God was in the Garden of Eden <laughs> with Adam. Um, it changes everything when you realize that what man perceives as God is just something a little bit more intellectually above us um, that we couldn't comprehend. Um, that's why I'm a hermetic with the all um, and being able to separate these image of these beings that kind of created religions on earth. Yeah. <laughs> well, actually they didn't create a man did <laughs> sort of, but um, that, that's what changed a lot for me. Um, when I started realizing that something happened, are they, are they, so oh, let's talk about these beings real quick though. Are these, these beings you're, you're mentioning, um, from all of my study, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> He's holding up a picture of his shirt for people, uh, listening on the podcast. It's got an alien on it. It's a Giorgio Succolo shirt <laughs> with an alien. Um, so the, the, these gods or these entities or whatever, from all of my studying, uh, from having encounters you know, that's part of the study and that's part of the experience. Yeah. I've come <laughs> to un understand when we're talking about Sukalo, we're talking about ancient aliens, we're talking about the reactors, we're talking about the Bible. Um, I believe in the, I believe in those beings. Um, are they good or are they bad? Or are, are they, is it the Sumerian literature that they're here to enslave humanity or is there, cause even then, like, the entities believed in like they had a creator as well. Yeah, of course. That, that, and and what, what I call, I call them, <laughs> I call them the Elo, the Elo yeah. um, yep. of, of, of God sending the creator gods, the little gods or whatever you want to call yeah. them, the, the workers, whatever they are to create us, to genetically modify us, however yep. scientific you want to get with it. But there was an essence. I believe that when I believe we call them the angels, right? We call them yep. angels when we see them and, we interact with them as well still to this day. I do believe in the bad ones. I believe that the earth is run by the government, which are bad people or, or see the seed of the serpent. Yeah, It gets into reptilian stuff maybe, but that's a biblical term, the seed of the serpent that will fight against the sons and daughters of God, which I believe are the ones who are filled with the spirit. Yeah. Um, what is your view on aliens, angels, good, bad, demons? Because like I said, the Christian version most christians agree to those pyramids you were talking about and those plateaus were built by fallen angels who were s channeling demons i don't believe that that's i don't oh, believe man. that by any means but uh, <laughs> i the, didn't hear that <laughs> maybe huh? i wouldn't have wrote my book <laughs> <laughs> you just dedicated it to two books now <laughs> but, um, no but that's what when christians like that's their explanation for all of this stuff we're about to go into oh, i know and you you know what people I, I i've been so good at not naming names i'm still not gonna but people would say that like like the book the bahavagata gita was like yeah. kind of devil going ahead thousands of years to plant something yeah. <laughs> before christ came i don't get me wrong there's plenty of christians probably sitting out there going what but <laughs> i heard these tales about you know uh, satan moving ahead of times to make things seem like they were that way so people would be confused yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I don't know if that's the right heard, way to no i've heard i've heard that too yeah um, yeah so it, well, well, have you, and you even hear that the, on the other end though on the other end that um the the stories that are written of you know the story of the of, of the hero's path or whatever that jesus is uh plagiarized from the other cultures and all the other stories in the Bible is kind of a rip off of all of this stuff taken and put, put together in one book. Um, 
I'm in the astro theology from a Christian perspective. I say, I probably need to stop using that word. I'm not a Gnostic though, because there's things in, in Gnosticism that I don't really agree with. And I'm no, not a. I know. It, it's a basket, isn't it? Exactly. It so I'm just like, yeah, I'm know. a follower of the <laughs> way. But here, here's a book here The Glory of the Stars. Oh, cool. um, the Bible is astrology. The Bible is pure astrology. It's beautiful astrology. It paints the stories of so many characters that we Lazarus. that we go through. We mm-hmm. we play the part and the role of those characters. And I believe that the uh, the zodiac is telling the story of Christ. It's tell. I mean, we look at the uh, um, you know what I'm saying the magi who are the stargazers or the seers were the yeah. first ones to show up and know where. The Messiah was to be born. These were stargazers. These weren't the kings and rulers or the or the priest. These were stargazers yeah, right. who showed up. You know, yeah. um, so everything kind of works together there. But I know we're jumping all over the place. But go, go back to these beings, man. What are you? Who are well, they? Well, like I said, I do spell it out in my book to a point because I use scripture to kind of pl- uh, build up my idea. Uh, I am totally cool with the beings, man. Because uh, <laughs> if we were uh, modified, you know thank God. <laughs> um, and the same thing, it's like, um, uh, is it Jesus or Michael said that he went um, more or less cast accusations against the devil? I, I think it was Michael when he okay. was um, the archangel Michael, when he was having, a, a, he was being held back at one point, he was trying to get somewhere. Uh, sorry, I'm kind okay, of yeah, on. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's talking about he was he was withstanding. Maybe this is the same point. He was withstanding the um, the prince of Persia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Principality he, that was uh, battling him in outer space. Yeah, and he wouldn't pass accusations and neither do I. I'm totally cool. He went to devil. <laughs> the, the people's devil i know where mine is <laughs> but anyway um you know because even in the gnostic the nagadami it, it talks about um shaitan is it shaitan i think yeah, i'm saying shaitan, it right shaitan, uh, which shaitan. kind of seemed to be the playoff of where the name satan came from it is that's where it's from uh, yeah yeah exactly so you know you have all these players early in the day more or less less like the gobateki days the easter island days possibly atlantis days um uh, Lumeria days, you have all these players um, that are forgotten because of the flood. Uh, the flood obviously got rid of just about everything to start anew. Um, so you have these beings that came down, you know, who have ob- obviously been living in other civilizations for who knows how long. Um, the Sumerian tablets talk a lot about Mars being the way station um, and coming here. So when you see the buildings and you think about the way man was uh, 7,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago, these things are just completely impossible. I mean, I, I love when people try to wrap their mind about like having these 5, 10, 70 ton rocks coming down on barges on the river and how they're placed inside the pyramid yet. <laughs> like the pyramid was built around these coffers, I think, yeah. it, right? Um, that way just astronomical <laughs> it's, you know it, it it's, it's impossible it's vibration it's sound it's music it's pythagorean teaching <laughs> it's uh learning to take these things it's a knowledge that we don't know and it's not that we didn't know because maybe some of us did know it uh five thousand three thousand years ago um but whatever it was you know you have toast with the ibis head um you have the matadors you have these half beans um and it talks about it in the bible and it talks about it in enoch and all that where um, you know, they were kind of messing with the creation and all kinds of beings were kind of made up. You got it in Greek mythology. It's all over the place. Um, I'd prefer to live in that world. Actually, it probably was pretty cool. <laughs> um, but <laughs> it's, you know, to me, it's pretty cut and dry, plain and simple that at least through the Christian Bible, the Old, the Old Testament and stuff like that, and these gods and the players were these beings. Um, they might look to a higher being through the book and the teachings. Don't get me wrong. Um, but because um, they so, had to come from somewhere, too. Right. I mean, what's that? I said, because if they're created beings, they have to have a creator as well. Right. They have to come from somewhere. Yeah, of course. And, and that's that's who yeah. we look at. Yeah. <laughs> or at least I'd like to think we look at maybe it's not completely. <laughs> um, but, you know, that's where it is. It's just I think I think we're just <laughs> learning more about whatever that is every day. And it's yeah. just that's what blows your mind. And that's a good place to be <laughs> versus saying I got it all figured out. This is how it is. It was just, this is it. You know, 
every day. Yes, I know. And, and one of the cool things that, and I think this is where my second book might come in at, um, I love the timeline when like the Old Testament was written around 600 um, BC in captivity in Babylon. Okay, so it was, it doesn't mean it was all put together then, but it was definitely, the Torah was brought together in that captivity where the Jew, the Jewish God brought them into cap captivity into Babylon. Now that's 600, 500. Now something happened because you have Plato talking about it. You have Pythagoras talking about it. Okay. And then something happened. But if you look at the Mesoamericas in America at that same time, when these gods seem, when God got quiet, you know, you know what I mean? The Christian yeah. God got quiet. Why don't we hear, hear from him anymore except through the Jesus um, stent of 30 years <laughs> um, and Paul. Um, when God got quiet, I'm very sure that whatever these beings were or whoever they were that were part of the Babylonian pantheon and um, in the Jewish who walked them out of Egypt and stuff like that. It's very interesting that all these Mesoamerican cultures from Chichen Itza to Teotihuacan. I can't say Pum Punko because that seems a little bit older, but um, talking about the Nazca lines, talking about Peru, talking about Bolivia, all these nations started rising at that same time that right after the captivity of Jewish people. And it seemed like the God disappeared from the um, Eastern hemisphere. Yes. <laughs> That's, that's one of the things that I want to put together in, in a coming book, because it seems like when it stopped in the Middle East, it started in the Americas. Because there are stories about Magellan coming to the Americas and a female giant that they had on his ship. I think there's two of them, if I understand the story correctly. Um, the size was, I can't remember the size, but 15 feet, 20 feet, or even bigger. Um, so these things were around. Um, whether people want to believe it or not. <laughs> so whatever happened, it seemed like it shifted from one side, one side of the earth to the other side of the earth until something else happened uh, again. Uh, Cause even the Toltecs, you know, which are kind of like the, um, uh, they were a spiritual people in Mexico. Um, you know, certain o Olmecs, these people just disappeared. You yeah. know what I mean? East, Easter Island and whatever was there, you know, it was a big deal yeah. back in the day. That's this the rapture, man. <laughs> they were taken out of here, buddy. <laughs> Some, yeah, it is. <laughs> no doubt. So it's just, I like putting those pieces together. Something happened that shifted where it seemed like the people weren't willing to deal with it or worship it anymore. So they tried going to a new people. And it, it lasted for some time, maybe another thousand, two thousand years. But I'm just curious, putting those pieces together going. I'll, I'll actually be going to Chichen Itza with uh, NEXT on ADEP explorations uh, in expeditions in uh, November. So I'll have some more stuff coming out with that. So it should be pretty cool. Wow. A um, couple of things I got I got written down here. I know we can just keep going and keep going, and I'm and I'm good as long as as long as you are. You just let sure, me know. I just need some water, but other than that, I'm cool. Great. Um. So I'm trying to see what it was. All right. Let's just let me go here first. All right. You mentioned. Uh, you like the New Testament, the teachings of Christ, following Christ and stuff like that. But you mentioned you're not into the Pauline epistles uh, pretty much I anymore. Ephesians, Philippians. <laughs> I like I, I like Paul. I like Paul. Yeah. I think he I think he was a pretty spiritual dude. We're talking about taking trips, astral traveling to he heaven, you know. And and well, what about Peter though? Does Peter fall in that category with you, or just Paul? Because there's uh, and I say that yeah. I want to preface that because there's I, I like Paul. Some people are against it. Pauline, Pauline Christianity, where they exalt G Paul over Jesus. I'm not into that. That's, that's my issue, Derek. Okay, that, that really is. You know, well, I mean? some people say Paul is the Antichrist. Like there are, I don't know if you ran into that. Like they've run, they got, they got it mapped out pretty good too. If it, if you're open minded, it's really convincing about how he's changing what Jesus said and adding this to it and all types of crazy stuff. So they say was Paul a disciple or a deceiver? And a lot yeah. of people think he's the Antichrist. I'm not going down that road. I, I, I happen to like Paul, but you don't yeah, look at it like I that, you're right? <laughs> yeah, okay. You're not going that far. Okay. No, no, not at all. Um, and you could help me with this too, because it's been a little bit, but didn't Paul mention Christ more than he mentioned the name Jesus? He, he was a Christ bender, wasn't he? <laughs> you know what I mean? Didn't he use the name Christ more than Jesus? I'm not sure about more either, or I'm not really sure. Okay. All right. It's something I was reflecting on earlier and I just uh, wanted to get back to, but um, yeah, so all in all, I mean, you have the Gnostic teachings of Paul too, um, which are pleasant 
Um, I'm, there, there's a lot of good things in it, but I think the issue with me is that, that most Christians, Christianity. Yeah. Yeah. They're not following Jesus. They're, they're following, following Paul. Exactly. I'm with you on that. Yeah. So that, that's it. You know what I mean? So okay. then you kind of, yeah. <laughs> okay, so cool. I, was, you know, I mean, think about everything Paul did. You know what I mean? Um, I would never want to disrespect that. You know what I mean? Heart. I, I love workers in the field, man. So, um, you know, my yeah, hat's off. Um, it. Yeah, it's pretty, um, pretty deep. I forgot what I was going to say. That's Something right. about Peter. I don't know. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, with like Peter when he talked about the food coming down on the on the. Uh, That's deep. Yeah. Kill and eat and stuff like that. You know, my family's like half vegetarian, and honestly, dude, it's just like people can do what they want. All I know is um, I've had strokes. I had bad health uh, because yeah. of anxiety and stuff like that, and I decided to be more. Uh, the only thing I, ha I haven't really gotten away from is chicken. <laughs> yeah. Um, but we've become more vegetarian. So it's just like, you know, I just remember a lot of Christians always using that scripture to justify the law, if, huh? breaking the law and eating unclean animals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, but I've just learned that, you know, as humans, we're the, you know, when you go all the way back to the beginning of the Bible, it talks about uh, the larger beings, the sons of God starting to eat man and yeah. eating the animals and it, 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 it um, called God. So if it appalled God back then, um, why wouldn't, what changed? You yeah. know what I mean? It, it seems like we are more bent for a natural diet. It, it's, you know, I'm, I'm coming to that revelation. I'm, so, I'm coming, I'm coming there too. It's still a, it's, it's a process. <laughs> it's a process. Like we actually did, um, we were, um, messianic Christians for like eight years and where we were trying to get out of Babylon. And one of the thing was, things was, things was, eating according to the law, you know, yeah. whatever God said not to eat. So that scripture came up a lot. Trust me. Hey, you guys, you don't want bacon? That's Why? Good. Well, because God said don't eat it, and we're just trying to stick to that diet. Oh, yes, he did. He brought them down in a in a blanket and said take and eat. But if you get to the, you know what I'm saying, to the bottom of that story, like it kind of interprets itself. That was symbolic. Like those yeah. unclean animals were symbolic for people, for yep. beasts. And uh, and it was for Peter to bring the gospel to the Gentiles. He wouldn't be around Gentiles. They called them dogs. Yep. You know what I'm saying? They looked at him as like second class citizens, and he wasn't going to go to them. He had a dream where God said, "Take and eat." He's seen all of the unclean animals that Jews do not eat. They're not. That's they're not even considered food. God and yep. I, I'm with that. I don't think God created that those especially unclean animals to be food. Like they are. The garbage disposals, they're the cleanup crew. You are what you ate. Scratch that. Yep. You are what you eat, ate. Yeah, yep. yep. <laughs> and and that's in your blood and and they hold nasty and bugs and all kind of crazy stuff within their skin. Um so I I really do believe I, I still believe in that, but I'm I'm at the point now is like my struggle is isn't about if I eat a shrimp or a piece of bacon. My struggle is getting all the meat out whatsoever you know what i'm saying because yeah. i because we taught that for years and we have people who now eat kosher because of things we taught and then they're like yeah you got you got to get back on kosher it's like well, i'm trying to get back on vegetarian like that's the struggle yeah. now like yeah yeah, yeah. Like, I, just trying, actually, you know I love fish, to wipe it all fish out. Uh, seafood like five seven days a week so it, i mean kirk Cobain said it's okay to eat fish though that, yeah because they don't have any feelings <laughs> i'm not in the kirk cult either <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, but no it's so it's it's wrapping your mind around it and doing better and I, I think they enhance your your walk with god uh your thinking process this is my favorite story from standing rock uh, real easy peasy man show up at standing rock um pitch a tent next to the hoopa tribe from california uh walk up eating an apple one morning, uh, look at the fire that they have nicely made, uh, dug into the ground and uh, was finished with my apple and I threw the core in the fire. And uh, the chief um, at the time reached right in the fire and pulled the core out and looked at me and said, it's all cool, man, but fire is sacred. And it just blew my mind because I didn't realize so many things that I was missing uh, that like every extension of ourself is sacred. So, you know, kind of with the whole food thing, it's just, um, it's a tough one, man. You know what I mean? We've come so far and have been kind of um, lied to about a lot of things. So yeah. it's- We're trying to, we're trying to figure it out again. And yeah, I hate yeah. every side saying, this is right. No, that's right. Yeah. 
Don't eat start, anything. Or oh, 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 you can eat this. <laughs> but I'm like you, I'm learning. And I just yeah. know what's better for me. Um, I do better. I feel better. You know, yeah. I'm, I'm working at it. That's what like you got to go with. What makes you feel better. Yeah, Your yeah. body I mean. is I'm functioning better. I'm not going to tell people what to eat or what not to eat. Yeah. I just know. Like I said, if you're going to read your Bible and you think, you know, if you're going to throw me out for one truth, why aren't you paying attention to the other truth that actually started in like the third or fourth verse? Well, you know, the first or second chapter of the Bible where it says that the beans started to eat each other, <laughs> you know, and Enoch too, you know. So um, Enoch's a dead ringer to me, man. You know, it, it, it is in the Bible. They just don't know it. <laughs> Enoch um, is, is, is a deep one, man. It was the it one they needed to, to hide from us. And there's actually scriptures in the Old Testament that says that some of these books will be hid and it will be revealed at the end, towards the yep. end of the age, they'll come back. There's other books where it talks about that God will seal the knowledge and those who are learned and those who are studied and they, they won't be able to understand it. It is to the lowly. It's to the those who are unlearned. God will give the revelation of the book. That's where we are. That's where it's about spirit. It's not about, I got all these books. I've done the research. I've done, that's good. But if you're not tapped in with the spirit, then it, it doesn't even serve you. You can't tell me nothing. Yeah. Why are we going to people Everybody's got something to say about Jesus. He's this, he's that, he never existed, he was a mushroom, whatever. Why are we going to these people? Yeah, why are we going to these people who don't have a relationship with him and we're letting we're letting him, you know, we're letting them tell us about him. Yeah, amen. Like, I know him. I, I know him. Let me let me tell you about him. I know him a little bit. I you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Going to all the other nations. But that's one thing that's cool about Jesus, though, is that the other nations um, reference him. Of course. All the yeah. other books, the Hindus. Yes, Jesus came here and he, he, was, he learned for 20 years. And they have a shrine built to Mother Mary and they say that's where she died. And uh, he's mentioned of in the Quran. All of these other stories and all these other religions, they all give veneration, at least to say that yeah. he existed. They might well, not say he was the okay. son of God and the prophet of God, but they say that, no, he came here, he taught our people, he learned under some of the guru. Like, they, they, he's in their stories, right? Yeah, sure thing, man. And that, that's one of the reasons why um, I wrote the Aquarian, rewrote the, the Aquarian Gospel. I am the first uh, author to uh, retranscribe the original text from uh, 1906. Oh, that's because I, I started, I actually started reading the uh, the um, the introduction last night. Yeah. And I was kind of, I was kind of wondering. So you, you rewrote everything, just kind of, just kind of changed the wording and kind of sure. transferred. Like 188 chapters, um, all, uh, nothing was paraphrased, and um, more or less it was just verses. So I just learned that I wanted to create something that people, even my grandmother, can sit down and enjoy to read. Uh, so I really turned it into a novel. But I mean, it, it's taken from the Akashic records um, in the late 1880s through about um, 1900. Now, um, is he is he the originator of the Akashic records? Or is he just he, someone that tapped into it? He, no, he's the... <laughs> come on, trick question guy. <laughs> no, I'm not talking about... <laughs> no, it's all cool, man. He tapped into it. You know, it's there. I, I'd like to tap into it. <laughs> no, but um, is, he, is he the first one that kind of coined the phrase? You know well, what I'm saying? I, um, you could be onto something there. Yeah, yeah I didn't yeah. know that. I'm not, I'm not real. I know what the Kashyyyk records are, but I'm not real. I don't know who was the guy who came out telling cool you how to do about, it. Um, Levi Dowling is that he was one of the first, um, uh, I'm going to miss the term again. Um, doctor that used medicine. Um, what do they call him today? Physician? Uh, oh, holistic? No, no. Yeah. Yeah. Holistic. He's one of the first ones. Um, so that's what really makes this author really uh, interesting to me. Him and his dad were also uh, trying to create a one world church in the United States. They were the first ones. Um, I forget the name of the movement. It's, it's in the introduction. Um, but more or less, they were trying to get all the churches underneath one roof um, to be one people, which, again, amazes me. So when I read the Aquarian Gospel, people will question, well, it's not authentic. The guy had uh, meditated and got visions to play back the life of Jesus. And I say, I look at the character of the person and I say, he's worth following. He's worth looking into because of That's what a he did as a person. Um, and then the Aquarian gospel goes into the missing years 
and really the teachings are unbelievable, but best teachings I've ever read. And that's why I said, I don't need to get behind the Aquarian gospel and make it a matter of fact. Some people, you know, already came to me. So-and-so don't, don't think this is authentic. I'm like, oh, let yeah. them not think it's authentic. Well, they say the same. Oh, they're going to say that about every text though. Yeah. yeah saying, they, you know, race. because they're saying that about Enoch and how powerful yeah. Enoch is. They say it about the Bible. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. They almost didn't include Jude in it because Jude referenced Enoch in the yeah. Bible. Like all of these things of like, yeah, there's only a certain amount of texts that were found. So they're not it, people, every book. And, and because it, some council got together in 300, which <laughs> isn't even the book that the Christians are reading today. It's not the book. And they said, who weren't inspired. The council got together. People who weren't called, inspired got together to tell you what <laughs> books are inspired by the Holy Spirit. Hang yeah. That, that's <laughs> That's the biggest hogwash. <laughs> it really is. <laughs> and I was played up on that for a little bit myself. Like I said, ignorance runs rampant. <laughs> uh, let me, let me, let me but, ask you this, though. Um, sure. As far as copyright is concerned, there are some books that are not well known uh, out there. I do see some references to um, sacredtext.com in here. There's some books yeah. on there that aren't, aren't well known. How does that work uh, with to take... Uh, th um, his work and and get the copyright on it and be able to uh, make edits and kind of kind of you know what I'm saying reprint it and still have his name in there well, and stuff like that. How does that work? Cool, the cool thing about this actual work and um, real quick, my second book was going to be called In the Light of Gnosis and it was specifically all the teachings that Jesus said I know of. I have um, the Kaladi here, which is from New Zealand. Awesome gospel, um, love it to death and all the teachings of Jesus I was putting in one book and the Aquarian gospel was sort of like the core of this book. It was a big book. And then right when I was getting ready to kind of, uh, publish it, something hit me and it was all about the Aquarian. I got rid of everything else. Um, the Aquarian gospel was never copyrighted because it was printed in 2006, 2007, I'm sorry, 2000, uh, 1906, 1907, uh, copyrights came out in the 1920s. So it was never protected. And anyway, it's over a hundred years over its uh, publication. So you so have to I, find the first publication of it. And I'm asking about, cause there's a, a text in, in general that I'm really into. I don't know if you know about it. Uh, the recognitions of Clement. Yeah, I read it. I got it. Yeah. Great, great, great book. Is you have it in print, print version? That's, that's, dude, that's another one that in the uh, gospel of Barnabas or yeah, of, he was a disciple of Barnabas. Of Barnabas yeah. Books, dude. Yeah. Yeah. Clement's awesome. Yep. Deep stuff and about demons authentic. and how they operate. and Yeah, and that, and that book's authentic from a philosopher. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but so did I answer your question? No, it was never copyrighted because we didn't have copyright. It, that okay. came in 15, 20 years later. So I took everybody, if you go online and Amazon and put the Aquarian Gospel in, you'll get like 20 or 30 of them because you were allowed to put a new cover on it, take the text and sell it, period. Huh. What I did was put a cover on it, rewrite it. And I think, well, I think people are doing that with Clement. Cause I tried to hit a dude up who did that. I was like, bro, I need you on the podcast, man. Like you, we got to talk about this book. And he's like, he wouldn't do it. And I'm like, oh. I don't think he, uh, and this was a year, this was some years ago when I first read yeah, it. I, I think he just put a cover on it and put it out on Amazon to yeah, download for $10. That's what are doing with the yeah. Aquarian gospel too. There's gotta be at least 10, 20 versions of the original. I'm the, I'm the first one to obviously translate it into something very readable. Yeah. And well, that when we're, we're discussing copyrights, I mean, that's one thing about the Bible and all the different translations and versions. There's, man, so many of them. And the reason there are is like the, the Rod Parsley Bible, the Benny Hinn Bible, the Creflo Dollar Bible. They all have their own Bible. But in order for them to be able to sell it and reprint it, they have to make so many changes to the text. They can't just put their name on it, yeah, do a little yeah. commentary. Like they have to change so many words. That's why, like, uh, and and from the, from, from you, there's a lot of people who tell you that the King James took out the thy, thine and thine in the New King James. But there's so much that's that's changed from those earlier versions. And the reason they do that is so that they can get a copyright on it and sell it. And they'll change they'll change it up. And you have the message. My daughter, like, was she 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 goes to a Christian school. And they had to learn John three sixteen. I'm listening. I'm like, what the heck are y'all reading? Oh no! <laughs> it was like the that simplicity. Was a, that was a living Bible in the nineties. <laughs> yeah, well, they did it to the message, and and there was a big backlash against the message that the New Agers and people wrote that that version. But it was just so like weird. 
It's like, man, that's John three sixteen. Like I heard a couple things in it, but they're just trying to make it too plain and stuff, man. But it's no, I can totally relate to you. Maybe we can talk outside this podcast, obviously. But as you can see in the word gnosis, I rewrote Revelation uh, underneath the name Anagogia of a Scribe, which is Greek for mystical interpretation of a scribe. But I took I took the books in Revelation and put them in proper order, um, meaning that like the falling. Um, the falling away, also uh, what I call the Atlantis in in Revelation is okay. where they talk about the you know a lot of people think it's today about the the ship faring country that all all the nations wept when they saw her destruction and yeah. no one ever came to live in her again. To me, that's wow. Atlantis. To me, Revelation is and someone told me this way back in a Bible study in the late 90s that said you know revelation is past and i looked at the dude and i laughed in the scorn and i'm like don't tell the others don't get me in trouble you know you came here with me and stuff and then you know 10 15 years go by and i'm like a lot of the revelation is history <laughs> i think it a all is man is <laughs> yeah. you know so i i took parts of revelation and moved them into a, a, a right order of things is what i call them um even with enoch um when I rewrote Enoch in there, and it's very pleasant and very easy to read. Um, I took out the teachings of Noah that were mixed in with the texts um, and got everything on a proper timeline. Um, the first half of Enoch is all I care to read anyway. What's that? The first half of, of, of yeah, Enoch no, is all that's... The, the sad thing is like in my book, The Word Gnosis, at the end of Enoch, it goes into this, I think it's a scribe because you can tell from the writings of Enoch and also at the end, there's just like this judgment <laughs> and this hellfire that comes out of nowhere and to me it was a text that was written that had enoch on it and passed along with someone else's view at the end now it is in the word of gnosis i'm not happy about it but i wanted to keep the text together um i, I don't want to damn anybody um you know i'm just like that <laughs> um so only love can do that and bring yeah. people to Christ, man. You know, uh, that's one of my biggest sayings. Um, fear and damnation has never saved anybody. And there's a picture yeah. of the cross on Jesus' back. Only love can do that, man. Um, so, like I said, with Enoch, I wanted to keep it whole. Because I, I had a problem with, um, th this came out in my first book, my first publication. I took Revelation and I got rid of the uh, introduction and the end. Where it says anybody that adds to or takes away from any of these texts will spend an eternity in hell. And I cut it because it was the end of a letter and if you, you were read, adding to it now <laughs> yeah, no and i and this is where like my brother i haven't spoken to since 2012 oh yeah yeah um, you told me yeah. found out that i changed the text and removed text. <laughs> so i was like you know what it wasn't that important i was just trying to show the whole text without what i thought was another scribe's input at the end because um why would god or jesus threaten anyone <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> um, that's just the way I saw it. So when this happened uh, with my brother kind of criticizing me for removing something, I made sure in the next version of the word gnosis that I kept everything tight and I didn't remove anything. So it just made sense. I didn't want anybody to think I had something up my sleeve that I was trying to remove or add something that just didn't make sense. Other than that, everything is, you know, politically correct and fine. But, there's, um, a, um, a, there's a weird transition there uh, when you start venturing outside of the Bible as a Christian. Like, okay, what can I get into? Okay, now a lot of people's getting into Enoch. Years ago, when you were getting into this, it's more accepted. Now, you're, 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 you're liable to go to church and your pastor quote Enoch now. But, yeah, sure. you know, even like 10 years ago, it wasn't though. Like, mm -hmm. I had people, like, it wasn't good to quote Enoch in churches or talk about the Illuminati or fallen angels to really get into the stuff that's now. It's, it's memes. It's everywhere now. Um, yeah. but w when you, f you finally cross that threshold of getting into those books that they tell you to stay away from, they're forbidden books of the Bible. Ooh, it's forbidden fruit here. I'm not supposed to know this type you, stuff. Didn't Paul say that all scripture period? All, exactly. Well, that's one of the scripture. That's one of the things that say, you know, go ahead and read it, man. All of it's inspired. All scripture. It was in there once, man. Find out what it said. For sure, that's the Bible he's talking about because you know the Bible was around when he was around. Especially, like I said, and then that, and then Jude. You know, reading the book of Jude, Jude quotes Enoch. Okay, well, let's go read Enoch. It's quoted in the Bible, and you read Enoch, and then you find out you get a kind of game plan about what was to come or how these demons operate or whatever. Uh, and then you start reading the Bible, breaking it down even more, and you start finding if you and I'll just say this. 
there's a program called eSword. There's a lot of Bible programs. You probably do this even with Google. But type in, in the Bible, like a Bible search, book of. Type in book of. And you're going to find maybe hundreds of quotes in the Bible that says, as it is written in the book of the wars of the Israelites, as it is written in the book of Shemaiah yeah, sure. the prophet, as it is written in the book of Edu the prophet, as yeah. it is written in Enoch. Hold on, who is Shemaiah? Who is Edu the prophet? As it is written in the book of Samuel the seer. Hold on. Like who are these? Who is yeah. Edu? Who, who is Shemaiah? And where are their books? The Bible quotes it. Yep, the yep. Bible is quoting these, the, these other texts that cannot be found. Only a few, there's a few of them that, you know, Jubilees, and there's a bunch of them that were inspired and, and were around that aren't mentioned. But let's deal with the books that are mentioned. Enoch is yeah. one of those books. Jubilees is one of those books. The sun, as it is written in the book of Jubilees, I think it is, the sun stood still. And then we get that yeah. story about the sun standing still. I believe it's Jubilees. And um, there's a lot of stuff in there that just opens you up. So it's not about getting bored with the Bible. It's about being fascinated with the Bible. Yeah, right. It's quoting these other texts. Why? What does it say? Why did they take it out? And it just starts snowballing and say, man, you know, and then you have to, it, just, it opens the door. But to have that in front of you, and, and I know because it's kind of scary is venturing out and I don't know if I should read this. My pastor said no, you know, that kind of stuff, you know. Yeah, yeah. Book of Jasher, uh, Christy says. Yeah, Book of Jasher. I said yeah. Jubilees. Well, Jubilees and Jasher are both books, yeah. But um, yeah. It, it's something, deep. Something did happen in David and Solomon in the Bible. When you actually know and you go back and you start looking at the way David spoke and Solomon spoke, uh, David, you know, the, God doesn't delight in sacrifices. Well, isn't that your culture? <laughs> yeah. Hasn't that been going on for a long time? You know, and even with Solomon, there's a, there's a black magic book I tried to read. And it was the same time I kind of was going through my phase with the, yeah. you know, getting into the Colburn and the other books. Um, but I couldn't read it and I still have it, but it was, it was a very dark book by Solomon. Do you think it was by Solomon though? A lot of times you'll, you'll find, I, I, I do think that there are books out there that. I'm pretty sure this one was authentic. Oh, okay. Uh, you think it's authentic. Yeah, because I, 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 we can talk about it another time. But yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, well, I, I mean, my spirit couldn't do it, even yeah. though I was trying to see. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so I put it down. I started reading it. And I was like, "This is kind of black, man." <laughs> yeah. But I might read it today, and maybe I'll see it in a different light because I've evolved a lot. And I mean, that's lot. that's good to note too, because as we're talking about the Book of Enoch and how beautiful it is and how powerful it is, there's people who are going to try to find it, and they're going to find the keys of Enoch. Right. Yes. And they're going to find yep. these magical spells written of in the, in the keys of Enoch on how to summon angels and all this stuff. And the same thing within. That, that's what the book was about. With the, Solomon. Yeah. The, 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 it, the, it, the, um, the key, of keys of Solomon. You have the keys of Solomon yeah, and the yeah. keys of Enoch. I haven't read either one. I know what's in them. I've only read little pieces. It's different for you guys. Listen, it's different than the book of Enoch and the Testament of Solomon. Yeah. Both yep. are definitely go hand if you want to understand the spirit realm if you want to understand the bible you need both of those books yeah i say that with authority like you really do um there's terms and phrases and demons that are mentioned that they're only mentioned of in those books and jesus is talking about them openly and we don't have no reference point but those books yep that's that's because religion more or less did not want us to know that we were here due to a creator god and that you have influence and you can communicate with those beings. Like if you can communicate with the beings, God, if you can communicate with God, I mean, that was their thing. You, know, you, you can't communicate with God. You have to go to the priest and he communicates yeah. with God for you. You have to go to your pastor. You have to go to your leadership, go to your elder. But Jesus, his whole thing was like, look, I'm ripping all this veil down. I'm tearing up what y'all trying to build, keeping people away from their father. And I'm going to I'm going to bridge the gap between you and the Father. You have access to Him through what I've done, what I've shown you, what I'm, you know, the 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 work that I've laid out. And that's what He did. He tore down. He tore the veil that separated mere men from going to their Creator. And that's like people are saying, like, you know, Jesus is like uh, for control, and they wrote the Bible to control us. Like that's, you know, what I'm saying that's straight liberation, tearing down the wall that you have to yeah. go to a pastor you have to go to a shaman or like ever, trust me there's times for that right we need those leaders we need shamans we need priests at times in our lives somebody who is in tune with the spirit prophets preachers teachers evangelists we need those people who are seasoned 
but you can just look within and go straight to the father. And that's what they've taken out of the books. That's what they've taken the, the angelic contact that you can, there's books by angels, supposedly the book of Gabriel, some deep stuff in that. I don't know if you've checked that out, but there's some really interesting stuff that they've taken out. And all of it is to take the power away from the individual and give it to the church. Yep. Give the power to the church that you have to submit to the authority. You can't go to God by yourself. That job. kind of stuff. They've done a really good job. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Think about it. <laughs> People are starting to wake up. That's why we have we have a torch to carry, you and I, and and many of other of us, others, and those listening. Um, we have um, an aggressive youth right now, meaning that we've come through. I was born in '73, man. I came out through the '70s and '80s. Um, did the religion phase and stuff like that. And I learned a truth, man, and we carry a torch and we're meant to be the same character that we have been studying and loving and um, abiding within. And I think we hold the responsibility of passing that on to other generations. Cause honestly, you know, I, the church is declining. It, it, it seems yeah. like it has to be, I hear kids saying it's about losing his power. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I think there's, and all of us kind of that are listening here, because I know a lot of us uh, have similar ideals, there's something bigger and better going on that it still can be a community like that. Same with your uh, class on Thursday nights, you know what I mean? I, I so look forward to plugging in and being a part of it. I miss the fellowships and the Bible studies and the teaching. Exactly. You have you know, to replace it. I, I met with somebody this week about being in the Roscrotians, uh, coming out of the uh, masonry. I, I like the initiations. I like symbolism. I yeah. love learning. And I find out most of this. And I, Ritual. I, yeah. And most of it's online teaching, which is great. But I, I do personally like the, the church setting. <laughs> you know what I mean? Meaning that you get together with brothers and sisters and, you know, can hold each other's hands and pray, uh, can delve deeper into things. Um get some real spiritual movement within, you know, where you are, I am also, you know, and yeah. I, that part, I, I want us to, people like you and I be able to uh, grow and expand upon and, you know, give people a place to go other than telling people to get the heck out. There's a fire. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like, we, we need to be yeah. able to create something that um, brings people in and makes them feel welcome. You know, We're having it, a, um, not by we making are. a religion out of it, but by having fellowship. Yeah, you know I mean? it, it's tricky because I'm doing that now, 100% doing that. And it's still tricky because even in those circles, you had a leader. I may be an overseer. I'm not, a, I'm not, the, I'm, I'm not at the top of the pinnacle. I'm helping create this stuff, but there's other people who are coming. There's other people. This is how our hierarchy really works in the body of Christ is sideways. There is no one. There's no pastor. We all look up to him. No. So a lot of the, the guys who have done that, a lot of teachers and preachers and gurus and shamans, we can name them. They've built a community, but the community is around them. And I'm trying to consciously, you know, step away but be there, but like, I'm not the guy, you know what I'm saying? Yes. I'm, I'm orchestrating things and running it, sure. but it's not about me being the teacher yep. and, and I'm consciously doing that. So you can't say that, Oh, you guys, you have all these followers. I don't have, I, I don't have any followers. Like they, if, if you, if anybody sees anything good in me, it's because of what Christ has done, right? It's because that I'm connected and tuned in. And they have to tune in. If they're just listening to this as the knowledge part, as a spectator, I really believe that they're doing it wrong. If they're not going to, they don't all have to do the work themselves. They don't all have to get, get into Enoch. They don't all have to stargaze and, and see that. Like, they don't all have to do that. That's the, 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 of learning from one another that we've done that. We can bring it back and we can share it openly and give them the power as well. But it's really interesting in creating the community where because it's easy to, to be put on a pedestal. It's easy. And I've got people who have done it and they're drunk off of their own praises. I've been there yeah. as a Christian rapper, like in back in the day and the applauses of men are intoxicating. So I'm conscious of that moving forward, man. And, um, it's beautiful and it's possible. You know what I'm saying? Um, so we're, we're in a really good place, man. And, um, and thank you for believing in it and everybody listening. There, there's a bunch of people listening live to commenting. Uh, Chris Bars is saying what's up to you. He wants to let you know he's watching. 
and uh, he's telling you to hop on Discord. Discord's a chat client that we use to okay. get in conversation and prayer and just lift each other up when we're having a bad day and have questions and need an encouraging word. Like it's a chat program with through text and also voice chat too. Awesome, and it's like it's creating that community. So if you got a few minutes, jump on there. There's a couple people in conversation. They throw in ideas about the Bible, about the about the Gita, about other whatever it is. We don't have it all figured out. You know what I'm saying? And we're okay with that. There's things that you stand upon. There's things that you know. But it's like, look, and I, I always say run from those people, man. Run from the people who say this is like they have an answer for everything. Like they got it all yeah, figured yeah. out. They're lying. Yep. They're lying to you. I, I can tell you some things that I've, I've encountered that they know nothing about. And I'm not saying it about me because the next person, they know things that I don't know. And it's about coming together and understanding the true spirit of unity. That's what it's about, coming together with all of yep. our experiences, with all of our pieces of the puzzle. There's things we don't agree on. There's things that we're going to butt heads on or whatever, but that's cool. Like, it's if it's if it's not worth dying over, it's not worth losing a friend or being an asshole over, like, I, I'm not going to do it, right? I'm going to walk in grace and peace and let's build together unless it's dangerous stuff or whatever the case is that that people are bringing to the table. Um, that's my rant that? about community and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> the sad thing is, is that I found out that everybody that I knew um, from the body, from the church, uh, for many, many years, for those almost 20 years, was mainly reliant on my relationship with their God, Jesus. When mm -hmm. I didn't, when I didn't uh, subscribe to that, they didn't want anything to do with me. I, I was, uh, you know, <laughs> able to be thrown out. That's what I'm sure you deal with it too. Everyone's it's kind of died down, but I would have people check in, uh, through messenger every once in a while. Yo, man, are you still <laughs> saved? You know, um, yeah. still believe in Jesus, you know, yeah. and I'm just like, I, just, if somebody comes up to me today, anybody, and they're, and they ask me that question, I will say no. <laughs> but that's not the truth, <laughs> but I will say no, because that's what they want to hear. That's what they want to know. That's all they're relying on. I'm an enigma, though. I, I love being an, <laughs> and, 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 and like 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 a whole enigma. I'll talk the good talk. Like they know that I'm like I can. I'm like you. I know the Bible better than them. That's why they didn't. That's why they never came to us, bro. Do you know that? Yeah, I know. <laughs> because you know it better. They're intimidated. They were scared to bring bring correction to you because you would have handled them with the scriptures. Yep. And I've had we've had to put up with that. That's a part of being a. That's a harsher judgment that you're judged with for being a teacher, being someone who's studied. It's part of it. Yeah. They, they, they they have a term for it. It's called ghosting. They used to call it excommunicated from the body. You're ghosted. Just stay away from him. <laughs> I hear you. Don't talk to him. He'll fade away. You know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah, but um, right. it's hard. You know, people have people are going through it. We went through it. Um, And there's so much to, to say about it, man. And if that's only if that's the only reason this show exists, it's for a really good reason. For, to help yeah. people who have been excommunicated or people who like to have a beer and they love Jesus. Oh, no, no, no. You can't drink, brother. You're a drunkard. Drunkards won't inherit the kingdom. Like, And they get rid of you and you're just like, you know, because you believe something different and you're okay with that. You're authentic and you got excommunicated and kicked out, you know? Like, yep. there's so many people, bro. This show caters to those people, which are people who are in the church, who love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. They love God. They love Christ with everything, but they're different, but they're outcasts, but they hear spirits, but they see aliens, but they love, mm -hmm. you know, Marilyn Manson. I don't know, whatever it is, like they're different. It's something that doesn't shift with them. So they're not part of the body. They, they, they're, they you know, made fun of all kind of little weird tactics or whatever. It's for those people. You can be whoever God created you to be. You can like that stuff. You know, as long as it's healthy, good stuff. We don't want to promote, you know, people being okay with bad stuff, that they're yeah, it's stuff that's killing them, right? We want to help them. And then on the other hand, it's it, it, it caters to people who um, are into the new age, who are into gnosis, but there's something more. I've yep. studied all the gnosis. I've read all the books. I've done it all. Truth seeker, what is it that you have that I don't have? What is it, bro? I'm doing all the stuff. Okay, okay, you get it. Let me show you what it is. And I can pray with that person to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive the infilling of Christ and have that personal, tangible relationship where it all becomes real. It becomes real and all the knowledge and everything clicks and makes sense. Damn. <laughs> like, I've been a part of that. That's amazing. I, this is why I keep, that's why I put up with the ridicule, the laughing. Oh, you guys are channeling aliens. You guys are, you know, <laughs> you guys are re going outside the Bible because you're tired of the Bible, huh? And all the just 
stuff over the years. I'm being funny, but it's it's yeah, no, very I, hard, but it's worth it. It is always worth it. And to encourage people to keep on keeping on no matter like it's going to be worth it in the end. It really is. If you enough, don't man. give up and you're faithful I, and you I'll stick with you, it. Dude. Yeah. 18 years in, in, in the building and five, six, seven years outside. I, I, we haven't been to church in two to three years now. Um, well, actually more. Well, I mean, physically, yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was weird because we went for Christmas last year, um, which I used to sit in the pews and scoff at all the people coming in at Easter and Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> and now I'm one of them, <laughs> but I, I, not, but I, <laughs> however, um, I have never like, even though I was alive and passionate and doing so many ministries in the church, um, I still went to the church for that feeling. I didn't have the one-on-one -on -one relationship that I do with God today. Yeah. Uh, it's amazing. I, I, I sit here with you. I walk around, I drive around. I am constantly, I, I'm a modern philosopher. I, a lot of people meditate. Um, I haven't completely got there yet. Um, I think on my feet and I talk to God while I'm constantly moving, um, in all things. And, um, it doesn't have to show up at praise and worship. It doesn't have to show up at a uh, sermon doesn't have to be in a body my life with god has becoming uh, just what jesus asked and what he kind of portrayed he just walked love he was, he was the image of the father you've seen me you've seen the father yeah. that's that's what my aim is and that's where um my faith and my walk have gotten to these days i mean it's beautiful i mean i more than anybody else i, I kind of kid with my children about it sometimes but i was ready to die a couple years back i i've seen the glory i'm I have nothing left here except to give of myself <laughs> to other people. You know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, there's nothing else I need. And I, I'm just, I'm not holding on to anything anymore. And it's just so beautiful where I'm at. And I can have my, my Jesus, <laughs> my teachings and, you know, love God, love the great spirit, um, love Allah, love whoever you want to call them. We're all worshiping the same one, sadly enough, <laughs> with all the deficients, um, you know, and as children, we just need to be able to uh, serve humanity and be there for each other. And it's just so lost because there's just so many de denominations and divisions. And it's, that's why I, I feel blessed that I'm a writer because I have these two books I wrote. So one day, um, my great great grandkids are going to be like, What did grandfather Zinzer write about? And I feel like I'm doing my family line a, a favor by yeah. enabling them to see something that not everybody would bring to them. Yeah. Um, and I tell my kids all the time if anything ever happens to me, I don't even say my books, I actually say the Colburn. I said, If yeah. anything ever happens to me, please do me a favor and read the Colburn. Yeah. It, man. Beyond blessing. So, um, yeah. Conscious I, of it. It's, it's the path, man. It really is. And I, I choose, we were talking about it way early in the conversation about, you know, not to say there isn't a, a heaven or hell, so to speak, um, that we find those things within ourselves. Um, I, I, the hermetic teaching is what I always feel good about is literally good returns to good. Yeah. Bad returns to bad, man. You, you can't fake it. You know, I, I have things I do I struggle with. And I think about if my life was a flash before my eyes, what would I see? Would I be happy with it? Did, you know, <laughs> did, did I serve? Did I love? You know, it's very, it's really simple. It, it's not judgment. It's not criticism. It's not hating people that don't believe what you believe. It's loving humanity and moving on from this earth plane, man. And hopefully you get it right that, you know, if, if you choose, you don't come back, you know, a lot of people came back and people don't believe in that, but we have Elijah. <laughs> <laughs> promising to come back uh, we got a lot of reincarnation going on, <laughs> you know? so um i, I just think I, I just want to get it right man you know i, I really do it's it's um, yeah at the, at the end of the day I, i'm with you on that you know at the end of the day over it all it's all love that mm -hmm. you helped because you got you got to look you know what i'm saying 50 years from now 60 years i don't know how much longer we have you know not promised tomorrow but you want to be able to look back and say Okay, did what I did, did I do something that mattered? Did I contribute? Yeah. Did somebody who's having a bad day, a bad life, did did I help them? Whatever it may have been, a, a beautiful yeah. song in my case that takes them on a journey, lets them know that God hasn't forgot about them, let them know that there's more to life than just whatever, you know, through these podcasts, whatever whatever I mean that's just something, but to be a friend, you know what I'm saying? To be a good father, a good yeah. husband, and just learning 
what those things are and being the best that you can be. And when you do mess up, you mess up and you know that you messed up. That's for you can you can learn. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. I always and, tell and, my kids that. And, and, and you know what I'm saying? You can e- evolve and be that better version of yourself. I do think that that's going to last. What else is going to last? What else, what else can we do to bring? I know we could try to go go big or go home. I think, I think I'm going big. I think you're doing, contributing something pretty big, pretty significant. It has the power to shape the world. Uh, one person at a time, you know, those type of deals. But, um, I think it's, I think, I think that's what's what in the end is going to stand at love, man, whatever's built upon love. I don't care what religion, what it sounds like, what it looks like, as long as it's love. Yeah. And end. Revelation speaks about, about that, about, you know, what, I think it's Revelation. Uh, what remains is the gold. Yeah, the wood, hay, and stubble yeah, being burnt yeah. up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to me, I, I always envision that, well, not always, <laughs> but anyway. I, I do too. I do too, yeah. As astral, going through the earth plane, just like the space shuttle, man. It, it, it has to have... Being burnt up to a sin. Yeah. Wow, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so to me, it really makes sense, you know. And, you know, love is the key. And I know that it's cliche, but it, it doesn't matter, man. <laughs> it's It's... It's what keeps me alive. It's what keeps tears rolling down my face when I can't quite uh, comprehend uh, the wickedness of this world. Yeah. Actually, uh, it's kind of funny because me and my wife just got um, The Green Mile this week. Did you ever watch it? Yeah. Yeah, dude. Good. I haven't watched it in a long time because uh, even as tears try to come out of my eyes right now, I beg God to take my sensitivity away because I couldn't talk to people. Uh, even at school when I got in fights, it's like I beat someone up and I'd get in the principal's office and I'm like, why do you do it? And I just start crying. And I just call them and I'm like, I don't know. So when I watched the Green Mile the one night, uh, back in like 2000, 2001, my best friend was dying of cancer. And I went outside of my mom's house, um, had a cigarette and said, God, please, 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 please take these tears from my face. Um, I can't talk to people. I can't witness. I can't, I can't, I just didn't feel like I can function being so, so in that situation and honestly dude uh 17 18 years it's removed dude i have people come and go i have people die i have some really weird situations yeah. that you think tate would cry it doesn't even get close to my mind dude because everything's temporal <laughs> time, time is something else bro like time has this way of dealing with people and changing yep. people you know, and knowing, I guess maybe Tom brings it into perspective that you don't live forever in this flesh here. Um, it brings things into perspective. It, it heals. And, man, time is something else, man. I hate, is, man. you know, I love change and stability, but I hate to see hardships and people struggle and people and time just beat people up, yep. man. And I think that, you know, the foundation that we have and the, and it's practical, you know, it's not just in theory. It's not just conspiracy theory or whatever. It's truth. It's like stuff you can, it's going to help you be a better person and it's going to help people. And that's what matters, man. It really does. Yeah. And you know what, bro, you probably saw the post recently, but you know, I haven't known a lot about the Palestinian and Israel situation because being mm-hmm. a Christian, I was taught to stand, <laughs> yeah. Behind, yeah. stand yeah. behind Israel and yeah. they can't do no wrong. So anyway, just real quick, let's talk about times and moments in life. Um, Back in May, I became friends with several Palestinians that were reaching out like the Lakota did with Standing Rock. They started reaching out to people that they didn't know to say, hey, yeah. there's something going on here. We need help, man. The world needs to see this. Um, and there was a moment where there was a, a widow of the age of 23 that has a three-year-old daughter. Um, her husband was actually killed in 2014 war conflict over there. So she was actually living with her husband's family. And if you... I don't know enough about it and I don't want to get into it, but I imagine that woman in this household of her husband's family. And she told me, so they don't care if I live or die. So she's living in her ex-husband's in, well, her husband's house with his family and her daughter. And I I said to her, I said, amen, what can I do? If you can go, would you go? She said, yes, it was a time. Um, I quickly got out to Facebook. I had the money to cover it, but I love getting people involved too. There's a lot of people that do want to do good works and it actually worked. Uh, um, I got a good amount of contributions, but it cost about $1,100 to get wow. her and her daughter safely across the border. Now I do have other families that we sponsor uh, out in South Dakota monthly. So I, I did have to take from that to take care of her. 
but it, it was a it was a moment in time. She's now living in Giza with her mother's family, and bombs aren't being dropped on her head every night. Even her roof came in the one night when I was talking to her. So it's just a moment in time. And when you see these people suffering, it's like you kind of have a heart to get in there and help them, you know. Yeah. And I didn't know what to do. Like I said, I could have done it. I could have done it myself. But I, I chose to, you know, get a few friends involved and, you know, some did come through and it was a blessing. Other people yeah. turned, it's all good. It's my ministry. God put it on my heart. You know what I mean? So that's where I work. <laughs> so, but it's like that moment in time, you can change a whole lineage, <laughs> you know, in one person, in one family, just by rescuing. Them. And it's just, it was a, it's beautiful to be a part of. Now we just talk and it's weird for her as a Muslim to talk to a man, an American, but we do. You know what I mean? Yeah. We're like brother and sister. Her, uh, she considers me her dad now. Oh wow! Because I'm old. <laughs> so, <laughs> There's a, a song out right now. It's a Christian song by Michael W. S no, it's by um, Matthew Matthew West. Uh, and it's um, it's a, the song starts off. It says uh, talking about he's shaking his fist at heaven. God, look at all the wars. Look at all the starving children. Look at all the poverty, violence, and all this stuff. Why won't you do something about it? Like, that's the song. Why won't you do something about it? Why won't you come down here and stop all this stuff? He says, I did. Like, I created you. I sent yeah. you to go yeah. out there and to, and to, you know what I'm saying, help these people and be, the, the gospel says, like, to go out and be the hands, of feet of, hands and feet of God, that we are God's workmanship in Christ Jesus created to do good works, to go yeah. out there. And that's the fruit of your hope. And that's the, you know, the, 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 the faith in action. It proves what you believe versus theory yeah. you, know, you believe jesus is god or he's the son of god get out of my face with that like just go out there and be jesus Let's quit debating about who he who he is what did he mean did he exist whatever whatever there's a time and place hey, for that but you have to be him man when jesus became man he became god to me that's the way i saw it so when I took him off and I, Jesus became man, he became God to me because <laughs> who would do that? Living. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what really changed with me. And it's very Wow, when it became a man and became God. Yeah. yeah. That's, yep. that's deep. That's I can see that. True. <laughs> For me, it's true. Yeah. You know, and that's with these books and like what I do and stuff like that. It's all great. But honestly, I, I don't have any reservations for my success. I really want to become successful that I could help other people and use yeah. my money to help families around the world. Uh, connected in Kenya now, uh, definitely have the Palestinian connection, uh, Honduras, as you know, um, going down into Peru and out in uh, South Dakota. It's just like, there's so many people we can choose to help or be there for. And, you know, I'm glad God has my heart bent like that. <laughs> if you can do, if you could do all that by yourself, man, just imagine like people you know, they want to help. They want to, they want to get involved, but they don't think that just, they don't think they can do anything that they, their voice isn't loud enough or they don't have enough money. And I always talk about the fact that I've got the friend, the dude who led me to the Lord and their little group of people that they still run with, they were on this weird prosperity gospel stuff. And they believe that God oh, wanted geez. them to be, uh, um, <laughs> I remember. Uh, yeah, they, you know, they, they were supposed to be the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. And God created them to be millionaires. It just, the transfer hasn't happened yet. You don't have to work for it. You don't have to build it. You don't have to use the gifts he's, he's given you. You just have to wait on it. God's going to set you up. They believed in that. And they would always talk about how they wanted to open up orphanages and feed the hungry and do all of this, this stuff whenever they won the lottery. Like they, they believed that they was going to win the lottery or this somebody, a pastor would call them and say, Hey, we got $50,000. They just, these weird faith things that kind of go on in the church or whatever. I remember I used to think that the pastor was going to step down and just ask me to preach one morning or something out of the congregation. There's a lot of people believe that. It's probably never going to happen. And there's people like waiting on these weird, ridiculous things. If you want to preach, go, you know, go out and preach. Do it. Like share share your story. You don't have to wait for permission anymore. You know what I'm saying? But they were wa wanting to wait on help to help people when they win the lottery. It's like. If God can't trust you with the few, he's not going to make you ruler over more. That's a principle to be a good steward with what he's already given you. You want to feed the, the hungry? Like you could do that for like five bucks on like Wednesdays. Like uh, um, Sonic has a special where they sell 25 cent hamburgers and we would go up and we get a big bag of hamburgers and we yeah, just go yeah. out and feed. And it was like two or three people and we do that together. But they're like, yeah, man, when God blesses me, when I win the lottery, I'm going to help the homeless and we're going to feed the orphans and widows and do the be the hands and feet of Jesus. Like, if you're not doing it now, he's not, 
when you yeah. you're not gonna do anything when he gives you that money. You're gonna pay yep. bills and pay your debts and all that kind of stuff. But if you're doing it now, if you're busy, if he comes back and finds you working, like the parables talk about, that's what he's supposed to be doing. You come back, y'all in here having Bible studies and like debating each other. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Right, come back later. We're busy, but anyway. <laughs> We're getting kind of sentimental here. We're talking about the root behind what we do and stuff. And it is very sentimental because we've put up with a lot of stuff in order to come out victorious on the other side. But going back to the book, I just got to, I, there was one thing that I wanted to uh, ask you about and just kind of bring up the notion about the, the Aquarian gospel. And this is about another man's revelation through meditation, through prayer, whatever, having these encounters with Jesus and receiving information from the Akashic records, which we can tap into ourselves, like you said. And he comes out with this 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 good work, uh, telling people how to do good deeds and be a better person and tap in and stuff like that. There's a lot of people who come out with this book. So we, uh, someone in church would see this a hip, you know, like you said, hey man, that's another gospel, bro. And bring in another gospel, then Jesus warned us of that. Paul warned us of another gospel, these type of things. But if we look at Paul, if we look at um, Joseph Smith, if we look at uh, Muhammad, you know, and all these other people, they all had these encounters with white light, with angelic beings who were given who received their calling, who received their message. And they and a lot of Christians want to like lump Paul in a different category as Muhammad or Paul in a different category as Joseph Smith. But essentially he's riding on the back of a horse and has an encounter with a white light who eventually says was Jesus. And we have those encounters. We write books inspired by similar encounters. What's the difference? Why? Like, you know, can you see the similarity there? Well, I, I can. And like you said, it's like some people will um, recognize one, but not the other it's the way it's always been because this is what it is or this is the word of god or they were told such it's like they they accept it but someone else comes in with a similar idea and it's not the same thing people do it all the time you know and uh one of the great things about the aquarian gospel i think it's a synopsis of all the gospels together i'm pretty sure it's the best gospel that's ever been written period it, it'll tie all the other ones together um with the missing years in jesus life. it has him going into india it has him going China, um, has him going into Greece, um, and it all makes sense. It really does. It brings Joseph of Arimathea in as his uncle, as the rightful uh, man, being his Mary's brother, uh, to bring in when Joseph died, he was the, the next father in line, the uncle uh, through Jewish. Wait, wait, wait. Are you saying that Joseph was Jesus' father? No. Wait. Oh, you mean Joseph, Joseph? Yeah, probably. Sounds good. <laughs> I'll but you know, what, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you. I'll tell you my favorite gospel, though. Um, not my favorite gospel. I'm sorry. My favorite line, and I'm probably going to do this book too because I have already done it. The Gospel of Marcion, where the Gospel of Luke has come from, starts out with in the year of Augustus Caesar, blah blah blah. Uh, Jesus came down into Jerusalem. It's my favorite line. I I'm fine with that too. I'm fine <laughs> like with John, with Jesus coming down. I like so, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so so let, let me just back that up a little bit all right <laughs> i'm more with jesus coming down <laughs> than you know a flesh birth but it's all good mm -hmm. like i said uh, i don't i don't need to really honestly i don't need to figure that one out right now <laughs> so it's interesting um i've studied yeah. it on both both sides and and uh yeah got some good stuff on it um yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he talk, constantly talks about his siblings and stuff like that. Well, he talked I mean, about his father. He called Joseph his constantly. father. Everybody, yeah. everybody said Joseph was his father. Yep. But then, if you well, ask, but why, why his name's uh, Yeshua ben Joseph? The yeah, son of, Yeshua ben yeah, Joseph, yeah. the son of Benjamin. Joseph. So I, I, I am on that side. I don't want to come yeah. away from it. I think when you asked me the question, I was thinking biblically and how it's you know brought up. In yeah, the I say that because like that's a uh, when you if you was to bring even that thing up, let's just take that. Right. That revelation of Joseph, of Jesus, Joseph being Jesus' father. Go to churches and tell them that. See what happens. Yeah. Oh, of course. That that doing in, in Romans, uh, it talks about um, that. Uh, uh, Jesus is the seed uh, of from the seed of David, according to the flesh, the mm -hmm. seed. We know what the seed is. It's the man's period. Man, man sperm yeah the seed yeah, yeah. and uh and there's so many instances and i was i come to that revelation and doing a lot of studying and you vocal about that like that's a 
it's a no-no. Yep. You know what I'm saying? It's l- yeah. Little things like that. Um, we we've gone over about two hours and twenty minutes. I'm cool with that. A little bit. One one last thing that I had, I wanted to ask you because we talked about yep. it before we went live, but um, you've been taking a lot of trips lately. You got a lot more trips coming up. Um, yeah. One of the trips I wanted to ask you about, you just went to contact in the, in the desert. Yep. I just want to say lucky. It was cool, man. It was cool. I actually, I was caught between uh, Aliens Con and Contact. <laughs> he was back um, and forth. <laughs> uh, Giorgio and um, Eric Von Daniken, uh, they, they were a trip for me, man. Uh, I spent half the time in Joshua Tree National Park and the other time hanging out with Giorgio and Eric Von Daniken. They're just the... Uh, the forerunners of this movement. Ancient movie. aliens. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's all cool, man. Um, you know, there was something else going on out there, um, that I was warned about and, um, I didn't like, um, Greer. No, Greer wasn't there. No. Think. Um, come on. Who's the biggest guy, a guy, <laughs> um, David Wilcock. Yes, thank you. Yes, there was a cult, a David Wilcox uh, fan base cult out there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know a lot of people get into him and stuff like that. I used to. I used to. Until and, he What's took that? it. He, I used to. He took it too far left, though, with yeah, Corey yeah, Good yeah. and all these guys. And he took it too far left, man. Yeah, it wasn't until the second lecture that I had some groupies next to me and how they were just ecstatic and like, I, I swore I was at a Metallica concert or something like that, um, that I realized there's something else going on. And I know a lot of stuff that he talks about, but the yeah. way he presented it was not far-fetched, but just like matter of fact. Everything was a matter of fact. It wasn't even speculation. Yeah. And I realized this cr- crowd and group, I, if it keeps going that direction, it, it won't be appealing to me. But with Giorgio there and Von Daniken and stuff like that, um, it, I, that's who I went to go see. You know, it was awesome. Uh, the people were really good. It was kind of like getting out of Woodstock. Not completely. You, you, it, was, it was a mixed group. But the first night I came in, Thursday and Friday, the, the people were just so pleasant. Something changed when mm. uh, the groupies came in. You could tell there was just something different. Um, it's all good. It, he, you know he, what I play, mean? he played he played a huge a huge role in in my awakening. I mean, I found 2012 Enigma in 2011, 2010. That's a lot of hard work, man. I, and I barely know anything about him, but obviously, if he touched you and helped you out early on, now, I, and I can't, and I, I love a lot of his work, and um, but like I said, the whole he went way. Someone here is talking about he's gotten real arrogant. Someone says in the chat, um, yeah. <laughs> somebody yeah, else was, is talking about Greer here they said I one look at Greer you just know Greer I followed Greer's work early on too but then you know yeah, they, got, actually, they went too far left man and, and uh, Greer taking that little thing saying it was an alien and it probably an aborted fetus like all kinds of crazy stuff and they're just yeah. taking it far left as they can and uh, the Corey Good thing is what done it for me and he's a he's a big name because Wilcock vouched for him and kind of raised him up it just gets so far out there it's hard to believe like we're trying to find truth right we're truth seekers right like who's telling the truth and who's making it up as they go there's a lot of those people and they're really good at it you know and and that's the thing some of them were definitely on to like the conspiracy theory end of it you know um the space force (laughs) you know all this stuff but then Giorgio and Eric are about the ancient sites and what yeah. do they tell us about physical stuff who, versus where theory we came from who we are and who these gods were, uh, the cargo cults. Um, and they can take you places that you can actually discover and learn for yourself. And, you know, kind of what ancient aliens mostly does the show. Um, and it brings you into being a part of it because they don't know it all. They can show it to you, but they're learning too. And they write books and they, you know, they bring it in front of you and try to help explain what they understand from it. But they're kind of bringing the ancient civilization. I think if we know our roots and we know where we came from and how powerful we truly are, it'll change humanity forever. We've been held down and crushed by religion um, for thousands of years now. And um, it's time we all stand up in the yeah. light, man. It's time. It's time. It's time for our children's sake. I mean, that's the biggest yeah. thing. I don't want my children going through this world the way it's set up i think we're very powerful individuals and i've learned to train my brain over the last five to six years um to be a beautiful person to be a good person and mm-hmm. do better 
um, without sitting in church every Sunday and reading your Bible, because I, I read it a million times, <laughs> I get it, <laughs> you know, so it's just like, now it's just in me, and I, I am the person um, that can change the world, period, yeah. and yeah. I think we all have that potential, and some of us are leaders, and some aren't, some of us are servants, and I'll tell you, I make a heck of a lot better servant than I do a leader, because if someone else is doing the harder part of the work, and they need someone to serve and finish the job, dude, I am golden. Everybody has a place, man. And, and, yeah, and like knowing yeah, what you're good at playing, you know what I'm saying? Playing to your, your strengths and knowing what you're good at and getting there and doing it. Yep. Exactly. It's a team, bro. It's a body. It is, man. It it's is. A body. That's why I love you, man. Cause it's just like, you know, I, the, how I found you, what I spoke about is <laughs> intriguing to me because I waited a while. And then when something didn't look right, I dove in and now here you and I are sitting talking. <laughs> you, you, you dove in when the controversy hit. That's oh right. man, let's because check. Out. I, I, we'll find this dirt. True Seeker exposed. Let's look it up. <laughs> no, no, because I I side with the people, man. I side with what's good or what feels right. And sometimes it isn't always 100 percent good. Sometimes I just feel bad for people and I get it. You know what I mean? But it wasn't. <laughs> like, it wasn't like that with you. It was yeah. like I don't like following people. I never did. Yeah. Um, I can walk beside them. I can be with them, but. So when I saw what you were doing, it was so creative and so you were doing so much, I couldn't wrap my head around it because of the person showing it to me. And then when I had an opportunity to remove that person and just look at you, I saw Derek and I wanted to know Derek because I was like, wow, look, look what this guy's doing, man. He's out there getting busy, um, so creative. And it's just, I'm impressed, man. There's not a lot of people like you out there and uh, even your humble <laughs> beginnings. I want to show my wife last night again. I think I did already. I have a problem with my memory, but uh, your humble beginnings and stuff like that. And I see that stuff. That picture. That, yeah, man. It, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> it, is. it blows crazy. my mind. I, I, off no, you know, I, I want to know more, man. I, I'm totally intrigued because to me, it's like, you're wow. <laughs> you're like, if, if that, if it looks the way it looks, you're, you're one of the greatest success stories I know. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And we're still I, early. What's that? I, and we're still early in. Yeah, we we're are. just getting we started. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Bigger things coming, man. <laughs> you <Yep>. know? <laughs> Beautiful. Yeah, dude. Um, there was, and you know what I'm saying? Thank you, by the way, right? And, oh, you know, of course, man. Of course. Um, uh, you, you actually went to another event recently. You went and seen the Oz man himself, I right? Did. I was going to wear the shirt. Oh my God. <laughs> yes, I did. <laughs> how was that? Was that your first time seeing him? And how was that? Well, I think it was, yeah, actually it's weird because I missed the black Sabbath wasp concert somewhere in the eighties or nineties. So that was like the closest I ever got. And I never saw Ozzy. And, uh, I like you and me talked on the side. I was totally anti-secular, uh, Rebecca St. James, Rich Mullins. Exactly. Uh, I've seen her. Uh, I've seen I Rebecca St. James. James. All this stuff, dude, you know, so going back, back, I'm 45 now. So right around 40, I went back to my roots and went and saw Testament and Anthrax on my 40th birthday of my sister. <laughs> um, and since then, I've been slowly getting my feet back. And what, but what the difference is, I used to go to these concerts and feel dirty, yeah. feel like, oh, my God, these are all losers, you know, people getting drunk and doing their thing, uh, doing drugs and whatever else. And, you know, I'd rip people apart. Well, now that I'm... Um, twice born <laughs> um and through the religious part of it I, wow dude the things that i enjoy about this music and these bands i can walk into a nazi concert and it was a clean concert most of us are old i was actually young being exactly yeah yeah <laughs> uh, so but it's just like i can enjoy what i enjoy and, and what i want to receive and everything else just kind of i don't rip apart anymore and actually it's a it's a bed of flowers, really. It's really changed my. I went better than Ozzy, dude. I went to go see Panic at the Disco back in July. Oh wow! My daughter drug me to it down in Philadelphia, dude. I've never met a performer like Panic at the Disco, and I watched these kids. I mean, dude, think about it. Um, average age about uh, maybe 16, 17. Yeah. Um, twenty thousand screaming girls, <laughs> almost, almost all girls, dude. And the dad, the Slayer, the one guy walked through and he said. God loves Slayer. <laughs> he had on his shirt. And I was just like, yo, man. And we were talking a little bit, but um, they blew, they blew me away. You want to talk about a performer. He, he's such a performer. He doesn't even have a band. <laughs> and I, I'm learning about them. I don't know if you know about Panic, but that was a concert, man. That was a He doesn't have a band? No. I didn't know that. <laughs> no, really. my, no, my, my, my uh, wife and daughter are like diehard Panic fans. 
Yeah. He have, he, has, he's by he himself? Has, Is it just going to tracks? Well, he, I guess maybe the band has been with him for one or two albums. My, my daughter can fast track me a lot better because I'm still. Duke worried. is saying too, man. He could do like. Yeah. But crazy. he's changed songwriter. The guy that sung his songs. Now he's a songwriter. He's out of the band. But I mean, he can go from the drums to the piano to the guitar. Maybe to the guitar. Maybe not the guitar. I'm not going to say that. To his voice. Oh, God. But he is, he is like the ultimate performer. And he came out of religion. And that's why I am so interested in um, Brendan is because he talks about his mom in his songs a lot. And he talks about religion. And this was the um, Pray for the Wicked tour. Um, and whatever happened and his angle, it, it's really awesome. man. It's really cool. And that's why I'm kind of like bouncing in his direction because um, that night, I, I know you go out to conscience and stuff like that. I'm sure you have one of those concert nights that you just will never forget. I mean, it was so amazing that I wanted to go to DC or Buffalo to see Tool. him. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, we're all here. Panic stand. <laughs> but anyway, I don't want to take away from the Ozzy concert. <laughs> no, nah, hey, all of that stuff. Yeah, dude. I, got, just... I, bought, I got tickets here to go see I Need to Breathe. Oh, okay, cool, the, man. The Christian group. <laughs> well, I don't know if they're really Christian anymore. They get mainstream success. I think they're still Christian. Oh, but, cool. uh we're going to see them, but yeah, man. But even with Ozzy, I mean, the similar civilizations there with the cross, the whole concert, you know what I mean? It's like, it's his theme and you know, the old black Sabbath songs and things. And yeah. you know, when you Mr. find out Crowley, people, how did he do though? Like, was it, was it, it wasn't cringy because he's getting Ozzy? old. No. Yeah. It's, it was getting old. <laughs> it was awesome. Yeah. No, dude, he was dead on. And the funny thing is I know from, um, either his wife or someone else that he has to have a monitor in front of him with his music, with his lyrics on, because he doesn't have them all anymore. So I know he's going through that um, too, that he just can't get up there and sing like most performers. That sometimes he he's seventy, going to be seventy this year. He just needs to kind of go back and more or less he's doing karaoke <laughs> with his own songs and making millions. Of dollars. <laughs> um, but. Uh, no, dude, he hasn't lost his touch. I, I sad they didn't play "Flying High" again or "Over the Mountain." Oh, really? Yeah, I'm really bummed out about that. But you know, other than that, well, they I mean, played I Crowley though, man. I, they got a man, dude. Oh, yeah, that song yeah, he yeah. did with uh, Lena Ford is that her name? Lena Ford? Is that her name? Yeah, the uh, song he did with her. I think that's her name. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yep, yep. Beautiful song. Yeah, yeah I, I, I don't Ozzy's... know if you saw the esoteric photo I took of Crowley when he got on. I didn't. I did a little bit of the video, but I took a picture of his background. I put it on Facebook, dude. It was the most esoteric. Um, image i've ever seen in my life man it blew me away and people were going gaga on facebook about it it was just it was powerful dude it was glowing it was it, it was awesome man i'll send it to you later in case you missed it but yeah it was awesome it, it, it kind of shocked me i wasn't ready for it and i saw it and i was like damn close my eyes forever yes yeah, yeah. uh jeff Very is in the cool. chat jeff so, miller even the oz man cometh man <laughs> even the oz man knows god man let it go <laughs> yeah some kind of yeah he knows he knows it yeah that's some good some of that good stuff man uh and yeah, it, yeah. it's all about the nostalgia man like going there and feeling like dude i just i just went back 20 years or 10 years yeah. or whatever it is like we went uh my wife got me tickets uh two years ago now to go see um uh, power man 5000 and or an orgy in atlanta and i was oh, really? I'm, I'm like diehard new metal corn and cold chamber yeah, those yeah. guys so yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, it was awesome to see those guys. Like, started listening to them when I was thirteen, you know, and got, and finally getting to go see them. I was gonna go see Manson and Rob Zombie in Atlanta, um, but Manson hasn't even been showing up to the majority of his shows at this oh, point. Nice. And he's just—it's kind of sad though. That's what I was wondering because like, it's kind of sad to see Manson where he is now. He's overweight. He's some performances are good. Sometimes he's half drunk. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Um, it just seems kind of uh, it's kind of sad to see, because if you look at o old Manson from '93 versus yeah. Manson now, like that was something to appreciate. Now you can look back on it and just see the performance and the Alice Cooper esque, the stage performance that now is just like, which a lot of people just showing up collecting checks and just yeah, running yeah, through yeah. their material and they got random people playing their instruments and you know it's something about that that. The nostalgia for me, definitely, but the uh, the creative aspect behind music and creating stuff and bringing it to the table. We went and seen Metallica as well, and uh, and that that's that was amazing. I mean, yeah, they just yeah. put out their it's new album, and it's just yeah. yeah, that was the only time we've seen them. Metallica, Tool, 
So I was crying at the Tool concert, bro. Like, yeah, Tool's cool, man. They yeah. got an angle, man. <laughs> oh, I was crying. I was sitting there crying, dude. They got a they got that song Parable that's talking about um spirits having a conversation before they come to earth and agreeing to uh this this life and coming out here and and, and to, yeah, to be yeah. you know what I'm saying incarnated and it's like to catch you in your pain and your hurt and the failure and stuff you go through is like be okay all the pain is an illusion we are eternal beings we're going to go back to where we came from and it's like just the beauty of that um i cried man it was beautiful good stuff yeah, maynard is definitely. awesome dude Don't maynard's really new stuff with a perfect that. circle oh my god what's that maynard's new stuff with a perfect circle that he's put out the new stuff yeah. have you heard it uh -uh. bro most I of it's about jesus realm a little bit but most I, of I it's about have, Jesus, and it's it's good it's stuff, man. I got. I'm gonna send you, send it to you. Cool, man. Awesome. I'm gonna send it to you. And for those of you guys who are, are listening, two songs. I'll just say this because I'm not gonna send it to everybody. But uh, "Talk Talk" by Perfect Circle, and "Disillusioned," and there's a couple more. But "Talk Talk" and "Disillusioned." Go back there, listen to those, and then send me a thank you letter. Those are beautiful songs. Good That's stuff. Awesome, cool. Well. What Bro, shirt are you wearing, I, man? Wings who? Oh, I just got this in. This is uh, oh, King. Kings. Yeah, yeah, Kings. Uh, <laughs> Chris Weber, bro. Yeah, Chris I kept, Weber. I, kept, I look like I said wings. <laughs> I got, I got, I got a couple jerseys in there. Kings, right? Uh, I got a couple jerseys in there, and those jerseys, I got like three jerseys I've got over the years for Christmas and stuff, my birthday and stuff, and they're like a hundred dollars a piece, right? And yeah, uh, yeah. I love jerseys, and it's, it's, even with the jerseys, it's nostalgia because I was a diehard basketball fan when I was a kid. Hundred dollars oh. a piece. You got this one for China from China. <laughs> Seventeen yeah, yeah. bucks. Did you? <laughs> Seventeen wow. bucks. Yeah. I did, it's got a Nike. It's <laughs> it's fake. It's not even real. Like it. That's right. It looks great, man. It's yeah. awesome. <laughs> cool. I'm like you. It's all good. <laughs> it took me like two months to get it in the mail. <laughs> oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's worth it a lot more. Just get the imitation for seventeen versus paying a hundred for the authentic yeah. jersey we didn't we didn't have like to know dude <laughs> you didn't have to tell us it looks perfect <laughs> yeah well i'm cool. letting people know if you want a jersey they're only 17 bucks they'll go online <laughs> to get you one man heck come on straight up yo <laughs> at the corner well bro let everybody know where they could check out your work man and uh and check out your books and and, and check uh, out what well, you bring the, to the table the books are available through Barnes and noble and uh amazon and almost any book distributor online worldwide pretty much so um, so it's kind of hard not to find even eBay, I think. <laughs> so anyway, um, yeah, it's, it's, um, the word Gnosis in the Aquarian gospel. Now, um, on Facebook, I do have the word Gnosis. Um, it's kind of, I started in 2012, so it's kind of just been like my storefront. So it's not just for the word Gnosis, it's for, um, um, all kinds of spiritual blessings. A lot of Colburn, Colburn's about half the stuff I post on there, um, and it's also the Aquarian Gospel. Um, same with the word of dot com. Um, that's the main site that you can order um, both books from the word gnosis dot com. Um, I also got a book trailer in there that NEXT helped me with. Uh, and uh, kind of all things gnosis for me. Um, I'm building upon this what I started. So, you know, um, hopefully there's many more. I got a lot of things I'm working on right now. That's kind of why I haven't been working on my Facebook page. I'm trying to get some. Uh, physical things done t-shirts i got a clothing line i'm starting i'm doing um, car emblems for uh, instead of jesus fish i'm doing the eye of horus and know thyself and uh, a few other things to kind of create help create a movement and kind of push it forward because um, i was all part of the jesus movement in the 90s so um i learned and i'm going to use the things that i learned to kind of um, prosper the gnosis movement so uh it's kind of what i'm doing man What's up, bro? Everybody, make sure y'all support his work. Go check him out and uh, tell him True Seeker sent you. Um, yeah, the whole the whole um, Jesus. Yeah, there's a hundred percent discount for that. A hundred percent. Yeah, it's free. <laughs> Don't say that. They're gonna send you messages. <laughs> Signed you. copy. Yeah. <laughs> um, I've got a whole bunch of the Jesus Fist uh, bracelets in there. I, yeah. I, a couple of years ago, I, I I bought them. I wanted one because there's like like I said, nostalgia. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Um, I wanted one, so I. I I bought a couple of packs of them and I just got like, I probably got about 40 or 50 of them, different colors. Cool. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Man, well, I, and I'll say a story about that right quick. The whole Jesus fish thing. Like when I got born again, it was, I was going into my freshman year of, of high school and um, I was going to a new school. Uh, I moved and I was just around Christians for the whole summer. 
got saved, got born again, and um, uh, was wearing the Jesus fish bracelet. Went to school. I went to school, and this girl was like showing me attention the first day of school. Hey, who are you? Blah blah blah. She had a Jesus fish bracelet on. I had one on too, but um. I was hanging out with all the druggies and stuff in high school. And then, and then she asked me, you know, what does that mean for you? WWJD. I said, uh, we want Jack Daniels. <laughs> nice. I was like, nice, man. Nice. And I just took it off. I was like, sorry, Lord. Yeah, man. High school times. Yeah. Hello. I hear you, buddy. I hear yeah. you. But all right, bro. Well, uh, I appreciate you coming on, man. And, uh, we'll have to do this appreciate again soon, man. Here. Awesome. Man. Again soon. Greatly great, great conversation. Man. Almost three hours, bro. I know. What's up with that? That's how they all. That's how long they all should be. But I, 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 one of the guests I had on a couple of weeks ago, I tried to do at least an hour, and I did like twenty five minutes with them, and it was like I was just out of, I didn't have nothing to talk yeah. about. It's like, all right, hey, man. We didn't, even, we didn't even get into this stuff. You know what I mean? We didn't even get into it. Don't we got into it. a lot of it, man. We touched on a little bit of everything. Seriously, it'll change your life. <laughs> the Colburn. Yeah, no, that's. A, I haven't even heard of that book until that until one, you told me. Book by Marshall Masters. There's only two of them in the world, you know? So <laughs> one's 100, one's 40. <laughs> and I, you know why I love the Gospel of Clady? Because when the, when the, uh, um, it states in here that when the disciples couldn't stay awake when Jesus was in the garden, um, they were all drunk from the wedding they were at. Hmm. It's interesting. It makes sense. <laughs> it does. Watch so. and pray. Well they, cool, well, they well they. I mean, they can never stay awake. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right? I, I will say this though, because I, I and I tie these together. I've talked about it a couple of times. The fact that we, Jesus is always going away to pray, hours on end. Right? What is he doing on, during during that prayer time? Um, and then we see the first time that like a camera goes in there with them to see what he's doing when he when he prays. And it's uh, was it James, John, and Peter? I think it was to the uh, Mount of Transfiguration where he's going yeah. up on the mountaintop to pray, they came with him. So we have someone to kind of write down what they seen. His, he starts yes. communicating with Moses and Elijah, appeared to him out of a cloud, and his face changed and his clothes changed, and he like transfigured in front of them. And uh, I think that was going on every time he went away to pray. I don't, we don't have no reason not to think that, you know? Well, just if like we, the 40 days in the desert. Exactly. You know what I mean? Because yep. we always, I always said, well, who's out there writing for him? Because he never, he was never a first person, I guess, in his writings. Well, <laughs> there's, um, there's this notion too. I don't really ascribe to it, but they say that Satan wrote a lot of Genesis. It's written of from the perspective of the, this being, this reptilian being in the yeah. water, watching Yahweh create everything. Like the earth was formless and void, and I guess the water, or however, or the darkness was here. I don't know, but they say that Satan transcribing, like, is watching Yahweh create landmass and put humans, and and so this huh. entity has written it. I don't believe that, but there's are people who uh, approach it from yeah, that yeah. angle. Yeah. Yep, yep. That's that's deep, man. <laughs> <laughs> interesting stuff out there. Another time. <laughs> yeah, it's some interesting yeah. ideas. I like to touch it, man, and uh, just kind of. Uh, who who knows though? We don't know, you know. Yeah, no, so, but, we don't. So, we don't. So, I, actually, I'm I'm okay with the serpent because I, I like this wing serpent, um, Quasal Quaddle. Yeah, um, it's Quaddle, from yeah. America. I'm I'm all about him. I don't know what it is, but I'm gonna figure it out. I'm reading a lot on it, and actually, my trip to Chichen Itza supposedly uh, NEXT is gonna reveal a lot of things to me. So maybe after I get back from Mexico, we can hook up again in December, January, and yeah, he's uh, a cool dude, man. He's he's cool a cool dude. Sunset. We're yeah, supposed to we were supposed to do some stuff together, but we never did. But he's a uh, he stays really busy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, maybe maybe soon then. He's he's the modern Indiana Jones man. He's just awesome. He's like you, man. I just I, I class you guys the same. He's doing he's doing some cool stuff, man. He's doing a lot of stuff. You know, yeah. he comes from the hip hop label scene and all that stuff. But you guys have that in common and stuff. Um, so yeah, I, I really uh, am encouraged, and um, I'm encouraged by people that grab a couple different things and kind of live life, you know, reaching out and trying to do everything they can, um, stroking as many chords as they can. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, I, so and, ju yeah, and just, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Judging their heart and their intention, being able to feel that it's coming from a, a pure place. 
Mm-hmm. That's always plus. Yep. Um, yep. Christy Lee says hello. Christy Lee's Hi, watching Christy, live. She actually is the one who left this book over here for me to check out. She, th- she thought I would like it, so she left your book over here. Um, she's hanging out there. But yeah, everybody's hanging out. They really enjoyed you and I uh, want you to come back on. So we'll do it again after your trip, maybe, man. Let's do it. We yeah. had a really good discussion here. I enjoyed it. Definitely, man. It's been awesome. All right, brother. You have a good one, man. Blessings and shalom. You too, Derek. Bless All you, right. brother. All right. Peace, Talk peace. To you soon. Later. Taint Zinzer, ladies and gentlemen. Go check him out. Check out his books. Some really cool stuff in there. Um, the Aquarian Gospel, Jesus the Christ. Word of Gnosis. Um, it's so funny. Like you have, like like-minded people. That that this podcast went it was enjoyable. Good. Well, I've I've had some good good guests on here lately, but it's better. I like even at the end, like just being able to be a be a dude at the end and just talk about music and talk about things that we like. Um, I love that too. I love just having a lot in common with people and and being able to uh go many places where it doesn't all have to be spirituality. It doesn't all have to be Bible or all Jesus or whatever the case is. But we can talk about music. We can talk about um, art, video games, whatever it is, man. You know, and just be okay with it. So, yeah, really enjoyed it. We're right under two hours now. Again, thank you guys for listening, hanging out. Thank you guys for all the support. Thank you tate for being a supporter he's a patron as well um thank you it means the world that i have people that believe in me you know um and who are able to support for as little as a dollar a month five dollars ten dollars whatever you're able to do i I thank each and every one of you guys for all the support It, it really does enable me to do this um couldn't do it without you you would like to support head on over to patreon.com backslash true seeker there you'll find my full uh discography of music Working on some new stuff to right now. Probably when I get off of here, I'm going to start writing. I've got uh, some more music that I'm working on. And there's unreleased music on the Patreon as well. So you get a lot of cool stuff. You get access to the uh, Thursday night School of the Mystics and all that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. Christy Lee said should say conversation instead of an interview. Yeah, it should. Because you're right, because I get to talk. If I'm just interviewing them, then I, I don't get to talk. And some people come on and won't let me talk. And that kind of sucks when we do an almost, you know, hour and a half interview and I can't, you know, I can't really talk. I like to talk too, right? I like to kind of get some ideas out or pick their brain. Or when I ask a question, I'm able to pull other questions out of it. And I'm like, I'll write it. That's what I'm doing, writing stuff down uh, that I want to go back to that we didn't discuss. And that's why we'll having so much in common we could just go and go and go and i was like let's get back to this like we talked about this we gotta finish the story and try not to let too much time pass by uh before we go back and 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 jump to that uh those questions and back to the same stories so it's good stuff um also let everybody know who's listening if you guys want to catch us live i will be at um shanti fest in tallahassee florida september the 22nd 2018 uh if you would like to uh come and see me perform there it's only five dollars at the door full day event uh we're also doing a live podcast i believe that i'm going to be interviewing ja love who is the guy who's putting it on um first met him at uh further fest some years ago 2015 i think it was and um hit it off there we've been f- facebook friends ever since and just been uh a cool person to build with so i'm going to be interviewing him i think i think uh, my people who ride with me, y'all, I got people that's going to meet me out there. Christy Lee will be doing um, uh, some guided meditation and group healing after the yoga session in the morning. Um, so I got a bunch of people coming up there to meet me. And uh, Chris is going to be there. And Nicole, um, y'all be prepared to do an interview. <laughs> I may have to interview one of you guys because he said he may be a little bit too um busy because he's setting up the event for him to sit down for an hour may be almost impossible so be ready be on call to do an interview maybe both of you guys i may interview both of y'all or something man you know we may do that if i can get enough microphones and find out how to record it we're gonna do it this will be our first live podcast we'll be at the event so the podcast is at three o'clock p.m and then the uh concert is at 9 30 p.m 
So five dollars gets you all that and a full day of yoga, hippies, dancing, music, glass blowing, all kinds of cool stuff. Ready to meet some of you guys too. So um also November the second, right now, we're planning something at the Lacey House. It's gonna be in Mobile, Alabama. It's the same place that I did my album release party. So we're gonna be doing another concert event there. So if you guys would like to uh Get info on that. It should be up on my website, truthseeker.com, and uh, stay updated on all that cool stuff. So all that being said, I'm going to say peace and shalom. Thank you guys for everything. Really enjoyed this. You guys are awesome. Yo. That does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.